This is Ham Radio Now, the most important amateur radio program. Wait a minute. I'm not going to get away with that. (laughs) (laughs) These that that show didn't work tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Hamcasters. Together, the most important amateur radio programs on the internet. Ta-da! Ta-da! And we get all everybody here together. Yep. And this is... Magic. Oh, wait a minute. I need to do this one first. There we go. Oh, it's, it's a little bulky. I'm going to give it another shot. Come on. One more try. Yeah. See, I haven't learned how to do this yet. There we go. All right. Um, and this is Ham Radio Now, episode 370, The Hamcasters. This is not every ham who does a show, but this is all I could gather and recruit. We lost somebody already. We lost a picture. Sam. Sam. It was, uh, Sam, yeah. Oh. Sam. Sam, where'd you, where'd you go? His, he his was, Wi-Fi He was exploded. looking better for a second, then he... I'm right here. Vanished. Oh, he's ah, there. he's there back. He is. <laughs> and he's back. What did you do? I have a uh, little rascal pester- pestering me right now. <laughs> oh, perfect. I should have some cats here in a minute. So uh, I just, I wanted to do a show a little, uh, and, and David, we had nothing planned, right? <laughs> We've been working on a few things and nothing yep. came through. So I thought, yeah, well, let's just invite a bunch of other podcast hams onto the show. And, um, and then <laughs> Sam's chasing his rascal again. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, um, and we'll do a little, you know, pre-holiday show. And, and see what you guys are up to. Um, and in, uh, let's see, how can I do this? Maybe from this camera. Yeah. Mm, that's not, yeah, yeah, that'll work. In, in the order selected by Skype, we've got um, Curtis. <laughs> um, Curtis, is it much more, right? Yes. KC5CLM and... Nope. Uh, K5 CLM. K5 CLM. I'm going to screw everybody's call sign up. Um, and your program is Everything Ham Radio. That is correct. Everything. You leave everything. nothing. You leave nothing out. Well, I'm sure I have not done something yet, but we'll get to it. Um, and, and this is going to be important for Sam because of Sam's most recent show. So we'll get to that in just a minute. I mean, probably be our first thing to talk about. Um, in the next on the hit parade is our co-host, uh, David, who I don't, I don't have enough titling capability for everybody, but I have one for you, David. All right. I'm honored. Okay. Yeah. Facebook and the rest of our audience. Yep. And, um, and I, I, I'm so glad you thought of this, Gary, cause I was just thinking we should like have like a, you know, holiday equipment episode or something. <laughs> it's it's going to be way better. It's be more fun. Uh, and uh, next, once again, uh, in an order determined by Skype is Dan Romanchik. KB, KB, okay, look, let me look at it. KB6. KB5 in KB5 in KB6 in you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You have an unrealed relationship with five and six, don't you? I do. I, I, and I, I, normally I make everybody a four. Yep. <laughs> but. And, you know, it's, uh, evidently what I'm doing tonight is just doing a, a you know, minus one subtraction. And, um, and Dan, your show, the, well, the show that you appear the most on is, um, the ICQ podcast, right? That's right. We'll yeah. talk about that a little bit. And you've got your own, uh, your own blog and I'll give everybody a chance to, to talk about their thing in detail in a little bit, uh, in the upper right coming and going, let's see if we can get them to come and stay for a moment. Is Hello. Sam Reynolds, the ha- is that your pest behind you? Okay, you're getting photobombed. <laughs> Sam Reynolds, the ham kid. Uh, Sam is KM4WDK, and he is a YouTube star. Um, and Let's go with that. <laughs> heading down um, into the lower left-hand corner and coming to you, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Australia, which means your picture really should be upside down, but but it's not. Yeah, right. No worries. Ano Benchop, VK6, FLA, B. B. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks so wrong as a ham radio call sign. We've been told that. Yes. We're going to give you a chance. <laughs> going to give you a chance to explain that in, in a bit. Uh, in the uh, lower center box, this is uh, like um, uh, 
Hollywood Squares. I mean, the last time I did the last time I did a show like this, um, it, it was I think it was Don Wilbanks who said it, it was Hollywood Squares. Okay, so here is Sterling Coffee, and Zero SSC. Hey, Sterling. Hi, everybody. You are from uh, I, the Phasing Line, and I couldn't get your buddy Marty, your partner yeah, in crime, he's on probably tonight. Probably busy working um, either K uh, VY1 AAA or, or KR1 DX. The uh, sweepstakes going on. Okay. So he's probably running a remote station right now. I'm almost certain. Um, yeah, we're a Phasing Line. I'm also a YouTube star, uh, as those are your words. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, and finally, last but not least, yeah. and again in an order chosen by Facebook uh, or by Skype, is Bill Stearns, uh, NE4RD, a call sign carefully chosen from the Vanity program. And uh, and you come to us courtesy of a bunch of programs, but uh, I, the, um, I was going to push you back in the ICQ in England. It's the Lennox and the Ham Shack. That's and correct. you are a correspondent for Newsline. That's correct. Okay. So here well, I, I occasionally do YouTube stuff. <laughs> Not quite the star that Sterling and the other guys are. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be cutting Sam's head in half, apparently. Sorry, Sam. You've gone, you've gone narrow on me. Oh. So that it looks like I'm there, even though I'm not. Ah, you've gone for, okay, so you're. It's a very intense expression. <laughs> yes, every, everybody just goes and still. silent. Everybody goes still like this and, uh, and staring in the camera. <laughs> All right. Before we start the rest of the show, I have to, I have to show off a little bit. Because um, this came in the mail the other day. And this is um, the Yasme Foundation is, in the 50s, it was a foundation that was um, set up to, to provide uh, funding for de-expeditions. And now they do funding for uh, anything worthwhile that they feel like doing. And, um, and they sent me a thousand bucks. Wow. Hey, congratulations. Wow. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. For, awesome. Um, well, it says here to help defray expenses associated with the Ham Radio Now series of podcasts. Quite valuable. And sharing information when among amateurs. <laughs> You're going to have to work for it a little bit more. <laughs> going to work harder there. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Particularly <laughs> the, technical the, te the technical presentations at conferences. My editing and presentation are uniformly of professional quality until tonight's show. Okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. We bring the standard down for you. <laughs> and they are greatly appreciated by the amateur community. Please accept our thanks for providing Ham Radio Now. And we are pleased to help it continue... Your efforts on behalf of the am of amateur radio are appreciated, and the president is uh, Ward Silver, N0AX. And I'm sure this has nothing to do with um, me putting Ward on ham radio now multiple times, primarily doing talks at the Tapper conferences. So um, I, I, I think that it's important for me to recognize that, that this is recognition <clears throat> for the Tapper conferences and the stuff that I do at Dayton, at uh, Orlando, the conference stuff, which is pretty much mostly not me talking into the camera and expressing my opinions. Mm -hmm. Pretty much not mostly that. But we'll take it anyway. So, and $1,000, that's not, it's not, not bad. Um, they, uh, they give um, two sets of awards. An excellence award is, uh, and I don't know what the monetary deal is with the excellence award, but you get this little globe real pretty globe. I should have their website up here. I don't have it ready yet. Um, and that's not what I got. I'm a tear down. I'm, what, I'm a notch <laughs> down from the excellence. I'm, <laughs> it's it, refund. Yeah. It's, it's not you excellence. Cash. Yeah. I got the cash. It's the, um, yeah, you're not half bad. We kind of noticed and you know, and I'm, I'm doing my best right now not to make them regret their decision. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to show was, um, got this the other night. Um, this is for helping out with bike MS local. Well, bike MSs are all over the country. There's 85 of them, I think. And I think hams help with every one of them. It's the MS society. And I'm going to go out on a limb and, and try to pronounce a multiple sclerosis. And, uh, it's, you know, it's a charity fundraiser and they do these bike MS things. Um, and I've been, uh, been working with them on that since 1991. 
Th- this, as um, described by the fellow that was there with me, um, is a participation award. You get this for showing up, and I and I came to their uh, uh, to their awards mm, event. And then the last thing I need to show is well, if you look um, back here at at um, this camera, this camera normally points at the ham shack at the radio. Right now, it's pointing back at the roaming gnome, and and as you see, I have uh, decorated intensively for the <laughs> holiday. It's we but haven't a, got to Thanksgiving yet. Yeah, I know. That, this, <laughs> that's uh, that's what we were saying at the uh, Concord Christmas parade yesterday. That it that it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Yeah. 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 So, um, in it, the reason it's not pointing at the radio is because the radio is off, and the reason the reason the radio is off is this. Is this is a well? I was going to say a substantial portion. It's a critical portion of my dipole, which is lying on the ground right now. Um, Uh-oh. And and I had this um, antique glass insulator with you know the wire on the other end, and and this is what I use for uh for the support line. It is actually a weed whacker line. It's a pretty heavy version of weed whacker line. Jeff ac 4 zo introduced that to me and the dipole came down in a windstorm. I thought I was using two strands of weed whacker on both ends. I am on one end, but there's only one here. And there were, there were two coming down to the bottom of the tree. That was the support. Uh, I'm not sure why there were two coming down there and only one up here, but, um, it's, uh, it busted off there. And so fell down and it was lying over the roof. And I thought, because I had two of these weed whackers, I thought probably the wire had broken. So I pulled it over the roof, and it came flying over the top of the roof, and this glass insulator hit the driveway and broke into multiple pieces. Uh, so That thing was probably worth some money. It might have been. Yeah, uh, I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I got well, a few. It is now. It's a Chinese puzzle, though. <laughs> yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. I got, a, I got a few more. Uh, so... Well, I'll have to shoot a line over the tree and raise up the dipole again. So a lot of things that we could be talking about tonight, but what I want to begin with, and I promised you guys I would be bossy. So um, I apologize <laughs> in terms of running the show because I really want everybody to participate. Um, and and we'll, we'll let everybody talk about their individual shows in a, in a few minutes. But the thing I want to start with is uh, Sam, the... the um, the third show, your third episode of the Ham Kid at hamkid.com. And uh, let me let's see if I can find it over here. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. I know I got it here somewhere. There we go. That's you at hamkid.com, and which takes you to the YouTube show. And so you've got episode, oh, four why I haven't been posting lately. And it's, uh, it only runs a couple of minutes. Let me play a little bit of that. Hey guys. You're going to get um, another takedown. Sam, <laughs> yeah. ham kid. Um, Sam's going to send me I a takedown. I haven't posted a video in a long time. Uh, three, four, a long time. Uh, multiple months. Um, and the reasoning behind that is I just haven't had ideas on. Okay, I don't think we need to go any farther. That's, you know, what, <laughs> what am I going to that feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been absolutely. There, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you talk about next? Yeah, exactly. when uh, when when Ham Nation was just getting started, and back when I was uh, cat climbing the trying to climb the chair behind me, when Ham Nation was just getting started, and it was in you know two three episodes in. I was at a ham fest. I think it was at the Huntsville ham fest. And somebody came up to me and said, you know, I really like the ham nation concept. And I was glad it's there. You guys got 50 shows tops and you run out. No more topics. You're done. 50 shows. And, um, they're, I don't know where they are. They're in the 300 someplace. And this is episode 370 of ham, ham radio. Now they were wrong. There's stuff to talk about, Sam. I don't, We'll ask each of these guys what their recommendation is um, to uh, help you out and figure out what what kind of topics there might be. So, um, 
I'll probably do a video soon about the uh, Concord Christmas Parade, but uh, not okay. sure when that will be. Concord, North Carolina? Yes. All right. Um, so uh, let's let's give everybody a chance to talk about their shows a little bit, and maybe they can talk about their inspiration and what uh, – you know, what got them doing this? I'm going to start with you, your Curtis. Um, and what, <laughs> what, uh, I, I'll tell you, I'll make you full screen. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's the full screen I need. Um, and, and this is your, uh, this is your show. Every, yep. Everything ham radio, which you're promising yep, that, you know, sooner or later it is going to be everything, but what, sure. how, how did you get into doing this? What wild well, hair caused you to decide you could be a TV star? Well, not a TV, but definitely radio. That's for sure. Uh, basically, what oh, that's right. was, here's an audio show, right? Yeah, just just an audio show. Uh, basically, what it was was uh, about 15 or so years after I got my license, upgraded all the way to extra, and have been doing this forever. It seems I was giving a test one day and. I decided just kind of got a wild hair and said, Hmm, I think I'll try and take the test too. I tried to take the test and I failed miserably like a 40% or something like that on just the, the technician class. And mind you, I've been an extra for 12 years or so at the time. And so I'm like, you know, I'm sure there's other people out there that are in the same boat as I am that, uh, you know, might've forgot something or just didn't know that something was there. So I'm like, you know, I'll just start a blog. I've always loved writing ever since I was back in high school. And I'm like, you know, let's do that. So I did that for about a year or so. And then I came up with the uh, – I found the the podcast app on my uh, iPhone. And I got messing with it and realized that there's ham radio podcasts out there. And so I started to listen to them. And I'm, after a year or so blogging, I'm like, well, let's – Let's give this uh, this uh, podcast thing a, a shot. Maybe it will decrease my workload a little bit on my blog. Well, I just kind of yeah, right. multiplied it, and yeah. So now I do a, a five monthly uh, podcast. Uh, was doing a week a weekly one up until uh, we adopted four kids, and my workload got even more. So uh, yeah, so now I'm doing it twice a month, and. Uh, Still going strong. I got uh, episode number 92 coming up uh, this Thursday. When did you get started? Uh, first episode was, was released on January the 12th, I want to say, of 2016. So almost two years now. Okay, and let's see. You are, oh, episode 91. I can see that. Um, and how, how do you do this? What, um, what's, your, uh, what's your technology? Uh, it's all done on WordPress. The the website is um, the recording and stuff I do on uh, Hindenburg Journalist uh, with a, uh, a ATR twenty four hundred mic, and uh, use Skype for my interview calls and um, MP three recorder or something like that is what what I use for the recorder. It's a free recorder and records every Skype call that you make. So go in there and edit it, and away I go. Okay, so if you've got a fancy microphone, why are you talking on that crappy headset? Because I'm at work. Oh, oh and, that's right. You said you, you're, you're just going to kind of be skating on your job at work, so. Yeah, pretty much. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a 911 dispatcher for the past 12 years or so, and I'm lucky enough to have a, a nice job and an awesome partner here at work that, knock on wood on, on Sundays, is relatively not busy, and uh, so... She was nice enough to say, "Hey, you know, you, you can come on up, uh, go on and do this, and and uh, I'll we're, cover it. And if I need you, I'll just say, hey, we're, you know, we're sorry, uh, all of our dispatchers are busy now. <laughs> if you have an actual emergency, please call Tyler, Texas. It's just down the road. They'd be glad to help you. <laughs> One of them is on a Facebook Live uh, video right now, so you can watch them right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so you got somebody covering for you." But you may have oh, yeah. to run it any minute if uh, the poop hits the prop, so to speak. Exactly. Okay. So um, if I disappear, that's probably why. And and so where do you come up with your inspiration for doing programs? Where, where do you – do you ever feel stuck? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I am right now. I mean, I've been 
Uh, my last episode went out uh, a week and a half ago or so, and here I am scrambling for an idea for this Thursday, which I'm going to have to record either tomorrow or the next day. You know, it's always something, you know, I'll, I'll come up with three or four uh, items to talk about for three or four shows, and then it's nothing. I can't think of mm-hmm. anything. And, you know, it just kind of goes in cycles like that. Well, now it's like, you know, I have. Uh, tomorrow and the next day to do my recording for this week and do all the editing and all that and the show notes and and all that. And I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. So, so so this, I got this strange email from this guy who claims to be a ham radio YouTube star. And he asked me to be on his show. So here's what happened when I went on his show. And then you just grab my audio and you play it. You're you're all set. There you go. (laughs) Actually, I'd be glad, be glad to forward the audio on to you if you want. Yeah, well, I'm recording it anyway, so. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> there we go. So, um, and then when when inspiration does strike, um, what uh, what does it feel like? What you know? What, well, you when know, does that happen? Like two thirty in the morning. Sometimes you know, it, it, I work I work until midnight every uh, every shift. And so it's a lot of times it's like when I'm driving home or when I'm driving to work, it's like, okay, well, I can talk about something like that. Or I hear something uh, on another podcast, they ask a question, or I see a, you know, in the, in the Reddit forum, somebody asks a question or on QRZ or something like that. You know, anytime somebody, I see somebody asking a question, it's like, okay, well, I can talk about this. I can answer that question. And not only will it help that person, but it'll also help all those other people that might have that same question, but not know where to, to find the answer. Have you done your version of NCIS Newington yet? (laughs) No, that was one of the things that I was going to talk (laughs) about this, this next episode. Because last episode we did our our Christmas uh, shopping list and it was like two and a half hours of talking about (laughs) all kinds of stuff that, that I would love to have on my Christmas wish list, but that ain't going to happen. All right, because uh, I, I think that um, everybody can join in on this Newington thing, or the Newington oh, yeah. thing, the NCIS thing. So, you guys got any questions you want to ask Curtis? You're all you're all podcasters. You're you're all good at interviewing and asking questions. What what do you want to yeah, dig into? Know. Everything ham radio. At, at least two of y'all have been on my show. So, <laughs> actually, three of y'all have been on my show. <laughs> Dan's been on there, and Sterling's been on there, and. Uh, 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 Bill. Yeah, Bill. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got my list. I have, a bloke. I got I have a, this list. Or like, uh, I got them all written down. <laughs> oh, <the> gosh. <laughs> got a few more to go. The guy down there. Yeah, I've got yeah. a question. Oh, no, I had a question. Yeah. I, and I've got okay, a question. So Why haven't I been on your show? Um. Uh. So so Ono, I think you uh you ch- you rang in first. So um, have you got an overall plan, uh, uh, an idea of where you want the narrative of your podcast to go to, where you want to, what kind of community you want to have around your podcast, what kind of people you want to inspire or talk to, or or what kind of topics you're, you know, over a longer term want to play with? Well, you know, it's like I want to do one that – kind of reaches everybody you know uh, you know everything i hear and all the little you know podcast help shows and stuff like that that i listen to it's like you know you need a niche down you need a niche down and it's like i don't want a niche down i want to know everything there is about ham radio you know all these different things and you know i try to um group them in a way you know i'll do like every i'll try to i don't succeed very often, but I try to do certain topics per month or certain generalized topics per month where I, where it's kind of like a uh, repetition of, of stuff or a um, building on one another. Um, you know, maybe one month I'll do stuff on emergency communications or one month I'll do stuff on uh, de-expeditions and working HF and contesting and stuff like that. And, and then another month I'll do, um, you know, stuff like uh, – building stuff or, you know, stuff like that. So I try to, uh, make them a themed month. It doesn't always happen, but you know, that's the way it goes. But generally, you know, like, like my title says, I want to know everything there is about ham radio and, you know, 
I like I like to think that I'm the one stop shop for anything and everything ham radio. So eventually I will get there. I'm sure I still have at least another hundred or two hundred or three hundred episodes here, but <laughs> you know, eventually I'll get there. They won't, well, ham radio keeps changing, so it'll never end. Uh, Dan, did you did you want to chime in? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> okay, I, I've been on I've been on Curtis's show, and I think it's great. Okay, well, there were two other tries, so uh, must be must be Sterling or Bill. Sterling, go ahead. I really love the show, um, and and I really one of the things I've uh, make sure my mic's on. All right, um, really enjoyed is like the collaboration between uh, and the friendship between like Ham Radio 360 and you guys. Like I guess you know because you uh, what was it? Kale actually sent you the the mic, and I actually have one of the right. ATR of one twelve hundred. Twenty one hundred. Yeah. Yeah, they gave it to me for Christmas last year. That's awesome, and I think that friendship was really great. And you've been doing super job, and it's you know it's on. I've listened to almost every one of them, um, but uh, don't take take that too lightly because I have probably every single radio <laughs> podcast on my uh, on my Overcast, so I listen to a lot. But um, well, I, I a, felt honored for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but, I, I uh, download almost unique. all of them. <laughs> it's just a struggle to get through. But yeah, keep it keep it up, and, and you're doing such a great job. And and I, and one thing I really notice in in a lot of your shows is you're really balancing like life and ham radio podcast and work and all that stuff, and that has to be a huge challenge. I'm I'm a young adult, and I'm just now kind of like figuring out what I'm doing with life. But you've got life figured out, and you have to balance all these things and and listening to it and understanding it. You know, that's a that's a really different perspective, um, and I you know I value that quite a bit. So. Yeah, when I was younger, it was it was a whole lot easier, you know. Before I got married, before I had kids, you know, I went from from just me to me and my wife uh, five years ago, no, seven years ago now. Whew. Hope my wife doesn't see this. <laughs> uh, and then uh, my wife and I became foster parents uh, two years ago, and we've had twenty three kids over the past two years. And then this past July, the end of July, we adopted a sibling group of four kids, three girls and, and a boy, from one-year-old to 13-year-old. So it, it's been very struggling and you know, working full-time on top of that. You know, thank God I'm able to, to, uh, to make it where my wife can stay home to take care of the kids because if we had to do daycare and stuff, it, it, there would be no way. I, and I thought I was doing well – with um, five cats. <laughs> Bill, did you have something? Oh, no. No, good. I, okay. I enjoy the show as well. So we will move on to uh, to David and uh, see uh, see where you got. Now, David, your um, your one and only show is... Um, this one. This, this, there it is. This one. This <laughs> That's one. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. Ham Radio Now. Um, and uh, why the heck did you want to do this show? You know, it's interesting. I, I have watched a lot of the um, the Twit Network for a long time and, and listened and followed those folks b before the Ham Radio or the Ham Nation show. And I remember being on vacation last year and you put out the call and I thought, I could do that. I think that would be fun. Love to do that. Cool. And um, took a little while to get it all together. And, you know, I got I got a list of show ideas. I, in fact, I've got about half of the... Uh, the new Wirecast studio built out and hoping by the time we get to Christmas time, we'll be able to actually run a show. I just thought it would be fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that myself because yeah. um, I'm, <laughs> I'm got things I need to do. I'm running out of, yeah. running out of time here. Um, you have contributed um, uh, more than a handful of program topics that we have followed up on. Where do you get your ideas? You know, for for the show, it's really I'm very active in the community down here. There's always something going on, and you know, I read I read a lot of the literature, and I follow a bunch of you know different internet news topics. And when I see one, I just think, hey, it may work or it may not work. And you know, I send out a bunch of emails, and I I hope that someone will respond to me. And I'm always <laughs> I'm always amazed when they do. They're like, oh yeah, we'd love to do that. And I'm like, okay, that's great. All right. Dan, uh, Dan, do they make you, uh, at the, uh, the ICQ podcast, do they make you, uh, come up with show topics? No, the, the, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Martin Butler, M1 MRB does most of the, uh, topics. What, what I contribute though is, um, uh, sort of the American, uh, 
viewpoint, if you will. In fact, I sometimes joke I'm their American correspondent. <laughs> and and I so I, I contribute about one or two topics every uh, episode that I'm on. And so I, I and I think that works out pretty well. You've also got um, your blog. Yeah. I, yep. Wow. I picked, I picked the right button. I'm I'm impressed. So for that, <laughs> that's that's all you. Oh yeah, it's all me. And, and I sometimes joke I have the uh, I have the number one rated amateur radio blog because when you Google amateur radio blog or ham radio blog, I usually come up number one. Okay, that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working yeah. on beating you, Dan. That that's you why I said that's. That's it's longevity. You like you now the most important amateur radio podcast. Number Look at that. Two. There you go. Look at that, everybody. Google. There it is. There it radio is. blog. So now, now if, so if, 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 you're, um, if you're logged into Google and you ask about something that you're involved in, then you're going to come up near the top. Right. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not associated with the program. So, you know, there you are at number one. Let's see. Uh, ham radio podcasts sts that's very scary it's true in australia as well so this is <laughs> Ooh, number I, said, three. I said yeah, i said i would come up near the top because i'm logged into google <laughs> i'm not here anywhere oh, well. ah, there we go way down way down here this was something interesting um oh it's from amateurradio.com i contribute there oh. once in a while uh, are this, we on the list I, I hope so. This is a, this is um, almost two years old. Uh, so let's see. Some familiar faces there. Yep. Yeah. No, we're not on the list and I'm, I'm a contributor. On, I'm not on the list. <laughs> I've been trying to be a contributor. <laughs> okay. Last time I send them anything. <laughs> Um, okay. And, uh, and uh, um, so where do the ideas come from for the, uh, for the blog? For my blog? Yeah. Oh, right here. Well, <laughs> yeah, but what's the, what's <laughs> no, the, so, for so, so I'm on, I'm on, you know, a lot of now, since I do have such a popular blog, I get lots of emails from people asking me, you know, talk about this or cover this. I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm big on Twitter. I have over 4,000 followers on Twitter. Um, and, uh, read it. I, and I go to a lot of ham fests and people tell me stuff and I write about it. Okay. So it just, you know, experience and, uh, yeah. and, and ideas that just, you know, happen to float into your head. Yep. I, I'll, uh, uh, give away one of my secrets. Um, Google tells me stuff, um, yeah. and, and on, on my phone, uh, one of the things in, in the Google, uh, I think they call it the Google Assistant. It says, "What? Well, what are you interested in?" And of course, I put in amateur radio. It keeps tossing me stuff, which I keep tossing yeah. over to David, and mm -hmm. then uh, and I follow up. Yeah, and you can well, sign up for you can sign up for a thing called Google Alerts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Google Alerts will send you news items, and that's one of the things I do on my blog is amateur radio and the news, and I get the that all from Google. Yeah, I do the same thing there too. Yeah. But I, it, it's not you know, a high volume of things. But. No, but and you don't and you don't want to blog about that or cover it that too much because it's too much. But uh, you know, once every couple of weeks, there's good news stories. And I'll have to say of all of all the hams here, and nobody take this offensively. Dan was the first, the first of any that I heard, and he was even actually before I was a ham because somebody handed me your no nonsense study guide. As Beautiful. I was as I was prepping for my tech exam. Beautiful. I get I get more than twenty thousand downloads of that thing every year. Yeah. Wow. I think that's the uh, one I used. Beautiful. Yeah. And I and I always rep it to everybody I can because it's like free, easy to get PDF, be on your phone, on your wherever. So. Yep. And I I sometimes joke that my study guys are the only ones that come with tech support because I, <laughs> I and, and what, and the, the reason I say that is. Anybody that ever got one of my study guides can email me with a question at any time, and I'll answer it. Okay. How much email do you actually get? You know, I, I'm surprising I don't get I don't get that much. I get yeah. maybe one or two questions a day yeah. max. So it's not not a lot, but I I I'm happy to field all that all that comes. Okay, so um, KB6NU 
dot com, right. and that's right. uh, where we find all of your stuff. So right. going to go to um, Ono, and oops, there's the Ono, um, and this is takes me a moment to jockey all the stuff around. This is your show, uh, Foundations of Amateur Radio, which is a little bit off the screen. Can I make it get fully on the screen? I'm not sure I can. Yeah, there we go. Um, tell me about that show. It, it, it's Australia, which is, is Australia amateur radio anything like American amateur radio? I don't know, because I don't know what American <laughs> amateur radio is like. I can tell you there's 1,400 radio amateurs in VK6 and 14,000 in all of VK. Um, so it's a, it's a bit smaller than um, the US. Uh, I started contributing to amateur radio. I got a license in, uh, in December 2010. So I've, you know, I'm, I'm still wet behind the ears as, as it goes in, in amateur radio terms. And I got invited to participate in the national news production. The Wireless Institute of Australia um, makes a weekly news program and it gets co-produced around the country on occasion. And I got invited to, to help read out a script. And after we re recorded our recordings, I, um, I was telling a story about being on air and somebody complaining that their, uh, their license didn't allow, allow enough power. And so they had to you know, upgrade so they could get more power so they could talk to the rest of Australia. And I, I was relating that and saying that you know, with my power, my 10 watts in my license, I was uh, speaking to Portland, Oregon from uh, from Western Australia uh, the week before that uh, person complained and that started <laughs> that was the very first um, recording that I made and it was called um, what use is an F call so my license is a foundation license it's the beginner's license in Australia and amongst the limitations are you're you're limited to 10 watts power and so I started off with you know almost reacting to you know what's the point of having such a crappy license and you know why why should you really you know, hone in on that. And, and, and it became almost reactionary uh, and it's been reactionary for a little while. Um, and I, I did that for about 200 episodes and I got quite militant and I decided that it was very relevant to the people in, in Australia, but not so relevant to the rest of the world. So I renamed it and I called it Foundations of Amateur Radio and um, continued on. I, I became a little less militant and uh, instead started focusing on the things that excite me about amateur radio and trying to find ways of inspiring people and trying to find ways of getting people on air and make noise and you know actually get on air and, and do things with amateur radio. And, and I've had emails from people that are, you know, a joy to read. They go from heartbreaking that, you know, they're almost lost to the hobby because they got bullied and 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 my podcast brought them back. They they had something to read and something to learn and something to enjoy and and found a joy in the hobby. And that for me is is everything. It's about you know why are we here? What is this 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 amazing hobby about? And how do you inspire people to to participate? And how do you get them you know revved up to try something new? So the name of it, the foundations, is um, a bit of a play on the license class that you've got, right? Absolutely. It's the foundation class, um, which American Correct. hands so are not going to be very licenses. familiar with. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So there's three license classes in Australia. There's the foundation, which is the basic level license. Then there's the standard license. And then there's the advanced license. And each of those license classes have different restrictions, different bands they're allowed on, different modes they're allowed to use. So, for example, the, the foundation license is only allowed to use hand-keyed Morse, um, AM, FM, and single sideband on, on um, four HF bands and two and 70 centimeters. So it's very restricted in the kind of things that it can do. And, and for many people, they, they see that restriction as um, almost like a, a, a way to stop them from doing things. And I, I think it's really a way to find out what you can do within those limitations. You know, we live in this world where the sky is the limit and everything should be possible. And, you know, I want everything now, but if you actually have a wall around what's allowed, then you can try and find ways of exploring what's possible and what's not possible. And I think that that's how I'm, how I derive my, uh, my excitement and how I, you know, find new things to talk about. Do you feel constrained to um, not upgrade? In a reverse kind of way I do. Um, it's almost like I've dug a hole for myself. So I've got, <laughs> 
what what would happen is people would come up to me and they would find out who I was because they'd heard my podcast or they'd heard my contribution on the news. I'm a co-producer of the weekly news here in VK6. And and their very first question would be, when are you going to upgrade? And my reactionary response to that was, when I'm ready. And and so now it's almost a case of, you know, am I ready or am I not ready? And at the moment, I'm still exploring things that uh, – I can do with my foundation license. I'm I'm working on a big project that, uh, you know, in the background is is slowly bubbling away. And and I think when I pull that off, um, people will realise that a, a foundation license can in fact do some amazing things. Um, it's not about the license class that you ho- that you hold. It's about your imagination and about the things that you can achieve with that imagination. The license class is a vehicle to make that happen. Um, so. Stopping the upgrading, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure yet. I, I did a tr- couple of trial exams and I, you know, I got enough points to pass, but I, I, I haven't actually gone to that step, and I don't, I'm not yet at the point where I need that. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of um, uh, Christian Kudnick's show, 100 Watts and a Wire. He started out with 100 Watts and a Wire, which is you know, kind of a fairly typical ham station. That's what what this station is. Um, in fact, it's. With the finals, I had to change in the radio, 85 watts on a wire, and there's just what's now left. Of, even a wire anymore. Here's what's left of the wire, <laughs> and then he yeah. put up a beam and an amplifier. So I made made fun of him on one show. He doesn't talk to me very much anymore. Um, the call sign VK6 FLAB, the F, uh, um, uh, preceding the rest of the suffix. That's um, the foundation indicator. It's your it is red yeah, badge. It's four, so it's four. It's my red badge. Yeah, in 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 Australia, the the four letter suffix is is indicative of a foundation call, and the very first letter has to be an F. Well, at the moment, anyway, they're debating and arguing because digital modes don't actually have space for four letters, and they're having a discussion about whether or not we should be allowed digital modes and you know tug your forelock and yes, you can have some extra privileges kind of thing. Um, so th- they're actually having a debate about. Do we upgrade the digital modes to allow extra letters, or do we change the call signs? And nobody's made a decision yet. They're, <laughs> you know, they're arguing with each other about it. But it's fascinating to to actually make a um, a DX contact with somebody, and they and they say all the right letters, all four of them, but not all in the same order <laughs> or not all at the same time. So you can't actually log it as a call. I remember having a contact with uh, with Israel, which is you know from my perspective, you know halfway across the planet. And he had all of the letters there, but no, he couldn't. He couldn't join them together and make it one. And and it's not like we we invented this yesterday, right? So the foundation call actually happened in two thousand and five. So you know we've 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 been having this kind of format of call signs for a little while now. You'd think that people had gotten used to it, but not, yeah, not the, so much. Yet. The first first time I came across it, uh, which was you know based on your podcast, I'm going, uh, is this guy like a bootlegger? <laughs> I had the same. I had no, the same legitimate question. call. Yeah. And, and and do you also feel constrained to stay in pretty good shape? <laughs> These guys are getting it. They're slow it's it's going, ah, oh, I get it. <laughs> uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, F-L-A-B. Maybe that's just an oh, American right. yeah, term. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I got that. Um, it's been a while since I've heard that joke. Um, so, so my uh, my my call sign was randomly assigned by the Australian Communications Media Authority, that's the equivalent of the FCC, um, I actually thought when I got my license that I was going to go straight on to an advanced license because I, I got into amateur radio the very first opportunity to learn how to fly a drone. And I'd been told that, you know, you can use more power on the Wi-Fi bands with an amateur license. So I said, how do I get an amateur license? And, you know, a weekend later, I had a call sign. And and I, I didn't really have a whole lot of stock in this call sign. So I just let them randomly assign one and thought, you know, That'll be fine. I'll, I'll 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 move on to the next call sign very quickly anyway, and I'll pick a real one, and um, it's stuck. Uh, and yeah, so somebody with a with a sense of humor, absolutely at the ACMA. <laughs> if uh, if you did upgrade, would you be required to lose that call sign? Yeah, you can't uh, hold a foundation call sign and operate as an advanced station at the same time. I could still operate my foundation call sign as a foundation holder. So I could operate with 10 watts on the bands a foundation license is allowed on, but I couldn't operate on a band I wasn't allowed on as an advanced amateur whilst using my foundation call. So you can have um, dual licenses in two classes at once, sounds like. Correct. Interesting. 
Okay, any rest of you guys want to uh, dig into Australia? Uh, I got a quick question on, on your call sign there. Can, I mean, do y'all have the, like a, a vanity program like we do here in the U.S.? I mean, can you have like when you get your advance, can you have a potentially have a call sign where you just drop the F off? Yes, if it's so. not taken. Um, I get what you're saying. Um, there are uh, two-letter call signs. There's not one-letter call sign. So you, there is no such format as VK6F that doesn't exist. There's a scientific call sign that could fall under that, but you can't use it on the amateur bands. Um, and then there's two-letter call signs for advanced and three-letter call signs for a standard, you know, very roughly speaking. Um and, you know, if it's available, you can have it. It's not a, an actual program to pre-allocate. And it has to be in the core area that you are actually registered in. So you could become VK, um, VK, wait a minute, 5, 6, six. LAB, six. for example. <laughs> you could yes. become, and, if, and, if it was available. And one of my friends actually had that call sign for a little while, and i got to tell you, everybody got very confused <laughs> because they were wondering if it was me. So is it is it automatic if you, if you had... Um, if you take the next level, do they just drop the F or you, you keep that and oh. then you get assigned another random? Yeah, you get another call sign. You can either another, apply or get a random one assigned. It, yeah. Right. So, any of you guys have a, uh, ever have a novice license besides me? Oh, I did. Sure. Nope. Okay. No. I took the novice test. <laughs> but I, I took the novice test and the technician test when I took my license. But I had just the, the no code text is what I started at. Okay, Dan, what was your original call? It was WN8KTZ. Okay, and, and I was WN9NSO. And then when I got my uh, general, that changed the N to an A. So, yeah, the N was our scarlet letter. Yep. Um, and the N is the letter that everybody shoots for around here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When, when I got the KN4AQ, that was in 1989, and it's an advanced class level call sign. And, uh, I thought, cool, I'm a, I'm an, a novice advanced because, you know, KN4 and then the A series, it was brand new. Just, they just hit the KN4s. It's been difficult because, um, the KMs had been around for a while. And so I was constantly KM and I was going, this is KN4 AQ, Kilo November. And then on, um, contests, which I don't do very much with, N is a legitimate prefix all by itself. K is a prefix all by itself up here. So it, I became K4AQ or N4AQ, and it was forever getting KN4 across. Now it's not so bad. People are getting used to it. And we are so in the KN4 the, in, by threes now. So in Australia, all prefixes are VK and then a number, and the number is the state. So I'm guessing that in the United States it doesn't work like that. Uh, the numbers are um, geographically assigned, but it's more than one state because there's 50 states and uh, only 10 numbers. So, so, so what about example, the multiple letters? Uh, it's um, a technician I level mean, or a general level is three letters, three suffix letters. Advanced, which is a, a um, an obsolete, yeah, deprecated license, um, is uh, was a two by two. And then the extra could be a one by two or a two by one. And they ran out of all of those and you can only get them by a vanity now. Um, and so the extras became two by two as well, but a different series uh, uh, in the AA through AL. Um, right. And, and, right. and here you can have a prefix that starts with an, an A, an alpha, a kilo, a November or a whiskey. Yeah. And it's all completely random. Yeah, because we're the United States, you know, we're in charge of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very random. Yeah, we're consistent. <laughs> so, so how many how many licensed amateurs did you say were were down under there? Uh, fourteen hundred in VK six and fourteen thousand in all of VK. In all of VK, and about how many listeners do you have for your podcast? You track that? Um, I get I get about two thousand downloads a day. Whoa, that's a pretty. Day? So much. Most of most of those are in in the U.S., mind you. They're outside. Yeah, I was going to say outside, outside of <laughs> outside of VK. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There's a few VK listeners. I get emails from them. I've got a few as well. I think, although I think it might have been you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. No, I get a few, and and, and I've got one. I'm sorry, Sam. Very go ahead. Nice. I have what four or five hundred uh, total views. 
Um, let's. Yeah. Uh, you got to start somewhere. Yep. 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 I was there before. You have to remember, I'm up to episode 300 and mumble. So you know, and and they're all up. So people, you know, keep going back to old ones. You know, I look at a, at an old random episode, and it's got the most hits of all of the episodes ever downloaded. It's like, why? Oh yeah, I have some weird videos <laughs> like, like what? that. What? Yeah. yeah. So Sam, I, I really you did good. Sam's got Five 78 months, subscribers, and your shows are uh, they're your your Belfung uh, episode is your biggest at 300, 437 views and 133 for public service. And your I don't know what to do with this show is only a week old and sitting at 31. So not, my day of thing video on my YouTube channel also got the most views just because it's like super popular. So. Yeah. Right, so I'll be making a show about Bay of Things then. Let <laughs> <laughs> me write that down. Yeah, oh, you want to know how I got my ideas? This is how I do that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they did a, did it, will it blend episode with a Bay thing? There you go. We could, <laughs> why don't we do that now? Who's got a blender? <laughs> if I want to ruin a blender, I'll do that. I don't think Cindy yeah. would want me to try that. Yeah. Maybe in a microwave would uh, be fun. These like $10 Bay of Things that you have to program with a cable, and one of them isn't programming. So I might as well blend it. Yeah. Okay, Sterling, you I are up. I finally can program it on with the uh, cable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to skip you, Sam, um, for the moment because we're kind of aiming at giving you ideas here, although it, it's, it's kind of sort of in the background there. Sterling, you've told your story a million times. Okay, this will be a million and one. And it'll be a different story than the last time. Um, so I have a lot of things going on, and I'm, I've never settled down. I've never settled for anything, I, and, and I'm kind of like um, uh, Curtis. Like I, I can't find a niche. I just do everything, contesting satellites, uh, DXing, and, and going to like Hamfest and stuff. And I think my latest shtick has been podcasting. Um, and uh, I'm, while I'm trying to kind of figure out more ideas, kind of like Sam, about what to do with my YouTube channel, because um, I really like making, making videos. Um, so let's go back to 2007. That's when I got my license, just after they um, got rid of the CW, or CW requirement. Um, I won't go into the story about how I got a, a, a license. I think you can find a, you know, a million videos and a million podcasts of that. But uh, um, So I started a YouTube channel just because I was watching lots and lots of YouTube. Lots and lots of gamers uh, were streaming um, their, their games, playing video games. And I was like, oh, this is be the, I, think, I think of ham radio like a video game. So maybe I'll make some videos about that. And so I did. And um, It's not super popular. Like uh, K7AG was my inspiration to do some videos. Um, but, and he's probably the, the biggest, uh, um, how to YouTuber on ham radio out there. Um, but, um, I've gotten a lot of value out of it. Uh, even though I don't have that many views, I obviously don't make any real money off of it. Um, but I made a few videos. Money, what you make money. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's and that? The, the M word. But, uh. I made a few videos. Um, so I went to school at Rolla, uh, W0, Echo, 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 is their, is their call sign at Missouri University of Science and Technology. I made a video there called First Contact, and it was just kind of a video, it was 17 minutes long, um, on what it's like to make your first contact in ham radio. And that video was for the ARRL's video contest. Uh, unbeknownst to me, it was supposed to be five minutes long, um, so I was out of the running, but uh, the people who were running it said, your video was really good. We're going to give you honorable mentions and all that. But it turns out that's my, it's always been my most popular video, 55 or 60,000 views. And I don't really know why. It's nerdy, blunder years me, without a beard, walking in to the E building on campus. Um, that shot took us about 35 takes to get the script right. Uh, and uh, beyond that, it was just kind of like a continual train of consciousness um, going from shot to shot. And that's kind of when I started realizing, wow, I'm kind of good at this, this video yeah. thing. For, First Contact is your third most popular video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 51,000. Then you have yeah. the Bayo thing and then the PR40. Anything that has gear that everybody <laughs> wants to hear about, it's always going to be the top uh, top videos. And the next best ones are going to be like how-to and, and satellites and uh, things like that. So, um, and I guess my overarching mission is like, I realize I'm the only young person like out here doing this. Um, I'm, or I'm at least one of a few. Um, so I guess I had a lot of, a lot of leverage, uh, not really leverage, but a lot of opportunity to, um, kind of 
stick my hands into or stick my feet to, into a into a whole new market. Now it hasn't really worked out that way. There's no market because of young hams because there are very very few young hams out there. Um, but um, what I found, in fact, just yesterday I was down at Sweepstakes, uh, the AWR Sweepstakes contest, and I met a freshman there at the uh, University of Missouri at Rolla, or Missouri S&T is the correct name. He apparently watched one of my videos, I think it was the first contact video, um, and realized, oh my gosh, that's here, that's at this university, I record, you know, where I recorded it, and that basically inspired him to go to the club, get a license, and do all that, and he was there running stations and, and, and getting interested in, into, the, into the hobby, and I was just like, I was I was crazy, and I think he even got that on video. So <laughs> I'll be making another video of uh, the sweepstakes. Zero, echo, echo, echo. Kilo Zulu, two whiskey, uh, seventy-three. Seventy-three. Uh, QRZ, whiskey zero, echo, echo, echo. Calling CQ <laughs> for a school club roundup. <laughs> November two, whiskey golf. Yeah, that brings back memories. I should have got a better haircut when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> we we all have embarrassing pictures of our youth. Yours is just a little closer to today. Yeah. So so there's YouTube. Um, fast forward a little bit to I think 2010. I was still in high school um, or 2009. I had friend uh, a friend Jacob Keo and Joe Andrews, KD Zero NVX and KD Zero LOS. They were both um, a little bit younger than me, um, and we decided to start a podcast because. At that time, podcasts were getting super popular, so we started the Youth and Ham Radio podcast, or YARP. I think we got to about 10 episodes. Um, Jerry, KD0BIK, he runs the Practical Amateur Radio podcast, PARP, so PARP, YARP, makes sense. He was hosting it. But after about 20 or so episodes, we got busy, high school, some of, it, some of us graduated, some of us were just like struggling to get through classes, so it just kind of went by the wayside. Um, Oh, also shout out to Matt Chambers. I forget his call sign. I think it might be NR0Q now. Um, so we had that podcast. That kind of fuzzed away. And then we went all the way. I did a few two videos here and there. Um, all the way to now where I was like, I want to get back into this. So Marty, uh, everybody knows Marty. Um, he's, still, he's a good friend of mine. And he's actually reached out to me through YouTube about like he's watched my videos. It kept him inspired, kept him up to, you know, up to snuff and i was like holy cow the young ham of the year is coming out to me and this was before that but i i knew him from contesting fame and he was like real big name and in, in contesting and everybody knew him so i was like man i gotta get this guy we gotta get ourselves together in one place so we can like you know battle it out on you know our debates and and you know just talk and at the time i had been listening to a lot of two dudes in a mic kind of podcasts the ones that are getting like uh super popular or three dudes or four dudes or you know women as well um and I thought, there's no podcasters, or there's very few podcasts that are just kind of a general interest, no topic, just general, you know, shoot the breeze kind of thing. So that's that was my idea. But with the kind of background that this is two young people. I'm 25, he's 15 or 16 at this point. Um, two young people talking about ham radio. And the idea is maybe this will help inspire a couple more young people to get into the hobby, as well as the older generation to see that there is interest and, um, you know, give younger people some resources like, Hey, there's this podcast. Some, some young guys. That, that's, girls. that's T W O young people, not T O O young people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so, and, um, we even, I even tried to do another one called the noisy key as opposed to a silent key, which is kind of a morbid, um, naming thing but a noisy key meaning like a person who's loud in ham radio we got like four people involved me marty two other guys jacob but we couldn't get it around get it to the point where he could get everybody in one place um but we wanted to do a youth round table similar to icq um but with just four young people so i'm still kind of brewing that up if anybody is listening to this and wants to get on a podcast called the noise key if you're young and uh, want to chat about what you do in ham radio you know in general nothing no, you know, no, nothing specific. You know, I'm thinking about starting that. So now was was the trouble in in getting that uh, to gel um, timing, interest level, yeah. or or topics? Figuring it out was, what to talk it about. It was really timing and interest. Um, we had, you know, our podcast going on between Mari and I, and then we had Jacob who's finishing high school, and I think, uh, oh, let me remember his call. His uh, his name. He's he's on my Snapchat. Uh, K D 
Who's the who's the here in Percy Maxim Award winner? Remind me real quick. He's gonna hate me for this. <laughs> yeah, I can't help you. Sorry. Oh. He's a he was a young hand that's um, always on W five KUB. But that happens to me all the time. I know. I'm, I guess I'm getting older, and I'm, yeah. I'm like. That's why. That's why I <laughs> give myself a cheat sheets. <laughs> oh, I, I started writing these down too. So. Um. Oh, it's uh, Chris Bro. Chris uh, KD zero. Now I'm going to forget his call. Arcade 8. This, this whole episode is going to be me trying to remember. <laughs> anyway, Chris Bro, I'm sure um, you can put in the notes or something that, uh, you know, him, he was also in the into this idea, but he was also really busy with school and stuff. So that's kind of the common common uh, denominator of young people is there's so much going on. Young people on ham radio. Um, I've even reached out to the the AWRL scholarship winners every year. The AWRL puts out a big spread of all the scholarship winners, and I'll go to QRZ, see if they have an active profile, send an email saying, "Hey, are you interested in like podcasting or getting an interview and all that stuff?" And I've had a, I've had a few replies. Um, we interviewed Emma um, on one episode of Phasing Line, and she was we did a video on the uh, uh, Oshkosh Air Venture. Uh, her call is KC9YGJ, and that's episode eight. I have that up on my screen, so I know what I'm talking about. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we don't have any schedule. We just kind of like say, "Hey, Marty, want to get want to do an episode?" Uh, sure. All right. And I look at the ba- past week, and we think about like what happened. And there's surprisingly, once you're looking at Google Alerts and um, Twitter, and I have a Feedly account with a ton of uh, of ham radio blogs, um, D expeditions going on, contesting. There's always something to talk about. Um, so I've kind of accrued of. Um, a list of, of things. And I also watch tons and tons of YouTube um, way too much. I, I watch it more like as much as people watch like daytime TV uh, did in the past. So it's my, uh, it's my version of TV and sports. So, but yeah, I've been told that, that young people pretty much don't watch TV. They YouTube is their TV. Yeah. I got, I got three, Which, three uh, teenagers right? at home that will attest to that. They don't ever turn a TV on. They just YouTube on their phone or computer all day long. Yeah. yeah, when I was growing up, I watched a lot of Twitch, like people were playing video games and, and a lot of other older people were like, you're just watching people play video games. Why don't you just play them yourself? Well, they kind of, there's a special kind of person. I can't afford them and I don't have a good enough computer. Yeah, and I don't want to spend the time like turning my character to be level 99 so I can do this fun, funny stuff that they do on uh, on screen. So um it's a way to live out their life. Casey Neistat's a perfect example. Why he's so popular on YouTube is because everyone who watches him is living through his like eyes vicariously, and he does a really good job of, of uh, doing that. So my latest video on, or my video on the eclipse, I kind of took his style, and I actually got called out for you, you know going Casey Neistat using <laughs> uh, that kind of music genre and uh, you know split fades and. Um, um, keeping things really short and concise and cutting myself off before it gets too long-winded. Um, things like little techniques like that. So hopefully you can see more. We'll see more of that on my channel. Yeah, I was going to oh, look at your uh, at your channel and see where that was. I had it sorted by uh, most popular. Let's go for newest. Oh, my gosh. So that last video, Airy Ham's Nightmare, it's just seven seconds. Um, what Some of my colleagues are... Uh, um, some of the guys down at Rolla made a ballon. Seven seconds, put, we can we can play that. Yeah. Now for what, Joe Haas, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I uploaded I, that. I have never, never <laughs> done that before. At least at least you put it on there. Yeah, I, I've done I had it before to, where it's still it. sitting on the bench. Yeah, I like, knew uh, it, was, it was our saving grace that they didn't solder it yet. So, um, oh, I've, I, I, I've been through the solder point. It's all done. Yeah. I've done it too. Everybody's yep. done it. And I posted that to YouTube and I, and I crossed it to Reddit. It's already got a thousand views and I'm like, Whoa, man, I need to make more seven second, like, <laughs> go, like. but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes things go viral, even in the ham radio world and a thousand views is, I'd say that's pretty viral for, for him. Yeah. Music. For ham radio. Yeah. Absolutely. It, viral enough. Yeah. Not every one of my programs reaches that. Most of them do. Uh, all right. Oh, you got, you got Ward on there for some reason. Yeah, he came down to Rala to do a presentation on impedance matching, and they live streamed it, and I just rehosted on on, uh, on YouTube. And then my so my Solar Eclipse QSO party, the one down on the lower uh, right, that I put a lot of effort into. I, I thought it was really good, but it's only got 100 views, 183 views. So 
We'll pick up a couple more. Yeah, here we go. Oh, sorry about the music, guys who like to stream this onto repeaters and stuff. Just like do what uh, uh, the newsline does and do a four second tone or something. Yeah. So but it's gonna, like, yeah, it we're goes gonna advance this a little session bit. And you know, I, admit, so I start looking at the, the sun. In between all of that, I do uh, some operation. So, did you operate during the actual eclipse or did you no, spend your two I, and a half minutes of awe? Here's where the actual eclipse is, and we all went out and looked, and I obviously have a camera in my hand. Um, I spent, but I did have whisper running in the uh, background, um, just beaconing and receiving. So it was all for HamSci. Uh, HamSci is the science initiative. They actually produced a video of all the spots. Um, I don't know if you can pull it. It might be hard to find. Um, but all of the uh, all of these spots through WhisperNet, PSK Reporter, Reverse Beacon Network, uh, DX Cluster, as the eclipse was passing over and there's a really cool visualization of like what band was active at what time so yeah i'll, I'll wait till i get those guys on the show yeah they'll be they'd love to yeah watch this video more i need to <laughs> I need to validate myself that putting all that effort into it is uh, is worthwhile yeah we did an eclipse episode i believe uh, david oh, wow. We did do an eclipse episode. We had somebody on that, right? There was somebody with us. No. Uh, Jeff and, and uh, Cindy. Right, right, right. All right. So, does anybody want to um, dig in on uh, Sterling? This youth. Yeah, stop ripping off the youth on thing. Uh, Mar Marty. Nice Marty's digging in on you <laughs> on the in the chat room. <laughs> oh no. Marty had a chance to be on the show. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of radio amateurs, as you have very kindly pointed out, are, are not young people. And, and promoting to young people is a recurring theme here in Australia. And, and you know, there seems to be this magic pickle, you know, we can appeal to young people phenomenon. And, and, and the general answer is, oh, well, we just go to the scouts and, and that's how we pick up young people. And and i got to tell you that it's just not working. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you, it's it's you know you go to a field day and you've got a bold, bunch of old crusty blokes standing you know around the radio shack and it's just not interesting so yeah. <laughs> have you found um another way to appeal to a broader audience and i and i'm not necessarily saying young people as a as a as a class i mean it's the same is true for women you know we don't appeal to women and yeah. and it's not because women don't want to be in the hobby it's because we're not exciting you know it's it's very exclusionary i'm is what it looks like. So how yeah. do you do that? Well, I, I guess I'm weird because I went to that field day, um, and, and the club, I'll use it as an example, uh, the WA0FYA Washington Zero Beaters, Washington, Missouri Zero Beaters, um, did a field day. And I went down there kind of like worried and scared, like uh, I don't know anybody. I've been on the repeater a few times and checked in onto a few nets. Um, but I had a person come up to me and say, hey, have you uh, ever been on the HF before? We're doing a field day and we're hitting stations from California, Oregon, uh, Canada, all over the place. You want to come check it out? And I was like, well, that sounds really cool. So I go over there and I listen for a while. He, they have a speaker set up and a pair of headsets and put on a headset. The operator's working some stations. I think he was running. He was logging and everything. And after about maybe three or four, he's like, he pushes the keyboard over to me. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> like double thinking. Like, hey, yeah, it's easy. Just, uh, just you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll write down what I, what I hear. Um, and so I did. He wrote down, and I just typed it into uh, N3JFP. I think we were using it at the time. And then after you know a couple of QSOs, I was getting the hang of it. Um, and then he took the keyboard back, and then hit a button to switch over the transmit to my headset. And I was like, again, like, wait, I have to talk. What do I say? And he had a pre-prepared script out there, like saying, "All you gotta say is, you know, this, this, and this." And so I was like, "Whiskey, Alpha Zero, Foxtrot." You know, I was trying to read. They actually had the thing, you know, laid out. So you 
weren't trying to they didn't they had the the words already in a script in uh in phonetics uh, in the whole exchange um that's, and that's one of the episodes, uh that's one of the better impressions of uh a non ham trying to yeah you know stumble their way through a ham script I've, that I've heard in a long I've time. been uh, practicing it because <laughs> we just did this at at sweepstakes we we had a lot of people um um getting on the air for the first time uh on uh, on the contest and I had a script laid out and you know, I'm, I'm saying this because this is I, this is kind of what I'm pushing. Um, and I'm afraid I'm not really answering the question, but I'm just like um, looking at how I saw it in the past. And and it wasn't about like all these old men are are so obtrusive and they're you know not paying any attention. The, the the real kicker is it doesn't matter like if you're young or old. It's you have to pay attention. You have to be a good Elmer. You have to like when you're doing like a ham class. Um, and I know. This is the the St. Louis Suburban Radio Club had a problem with this in the past, and they've gotten a lot better. Is that people come to your class, young people, but they won't stay with them. They won't stick with it. They won't assign, basically, not officially, but just assign an Elmer or mentor to stick to that person um, and make sure that they follow through with like, testing and studying and 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 provide them with the avenue to actually get on the air because, you know, as a new ham, you're not going to go out and buy a Bay of Hing and an HF radio and all this and that. Um, um, so that actually getting people involved, getting young people involved and showing like, it's actually a lot of fun and it's exhilarating to make a contact with some random Island in the middle of the Pacific ocean. Um, it is a real challenge to, to try to bundle those feelings up and then try to explain it to a person. The better way to do it is to show it. And I guess that's why I try to do it on YouTube. Were you, um, you know, I think, I think my, my take on getting young people involved and I teach a lot of classes, right. Is, you know, you, I don't think there's anything you can particularly do in particular to get kids interested. You can make it available. And as you say, be available as an Elmer. And I tell everybody that's ever taken my class to consider me their Elmer and ask me questions, send me emails, do whatever. I'll do whatever it takes to get them on the air. But, but, but I, I, again, I don't think doing things specifically for youth yeah. is going to do anything. You know, they have to, of, you have to have an interest in the, in the topic to begin with. A lot of people are going to, are going to, um, um, hate me on this, but in, for the past like five years, everybody's been about digital modes. Digital modes are going to bring in all the kids, get a computer in front of them, and they'll be on it like wildfire. But that's not entirely true because there's still this like aether, like this confusing, you know, it's still weird, you know, it's it's not like the end all, say all, end all, or end all, be all. Like digital yeah. radio is not going to suddenly bring young people to the hobby. Exposure yep. is, you know, exposure on these avenues like YouTube, podcasting, Twitch, um, uh, classes, scouts, all that stuff. That's what brings, that's what's going to be bringing the core young hobby as well as you know, my next point, like the software engineering, the, the techie, like nerdy side of things, computer science, that sort of stuff. Um, and, and hackathons, that sort of thing. Um, maker spaces, AWR has been doing a pretty good job of like getting their, um, banners up in maker spaces and, and showing like, for example, Ano, like you can go, you can make your drone go farther with a ham radio license, and that's been super successful in getting licensees. But it's not been all that successful in getting operators and getting contesters and getting um, people like us who are, you know, sit behind a radio and con, you know, talk. Um, ham radio is really turning into a tool for experimentation, for longer range radio, for um, data communication. You know, uh, Faraday RF, for example, is is uh, one thing I'm kind of. Working on kind of not. I'm just mostly talking about it. Uh, uh, it's a digital data radio, and its point is to educate um, hams and people about how digital radio works, how you send packets from one place to another at a very, very, very simple level from the hardware up. So, you know, that's where we can see um, young people. I think so. When um, when you first uh, got introduced to it. You know, and you were you know struggling your way through that script. Were you hooked at that yeah. point? I was hooked when I realized it was three a.m. I was running stations. <laughs> I, I the time just flew by. Like I, I really every single state I worked was just like holy cow. I just contacted Maine. Holy cow. I just contacted this and that. And then I was like, 
I was playing a game with myself. I had a list of all the states I contacted. I was like, man, can I get Hawaii? And then all of a sudden, I hear Hawaii, and I tune them in, and I worked them, and I was like, I literally screamed, I got Hawaii! <laughs> Were you starting to and understand was like, what was really happening, or was it all just yeah. still a mystery? It was, well, it was it was a huge mystery. I don't know what was going on. It was, it was not until I went home and, and, you know, investigated, like, how is this working? Like, how am I communicating with this wire strung out in the tree that I literally saw somebody put up like, you know, 30 minutes before I got yeah. on the radio. So I was going to ask what happened next. Um, I got an extra, <laughs> well, I, I was, I was a tech at the point, but, um, go ahead. Yeah. That was a question was, you know, but from your first introduction to getting, Oh yeah. You know, getting, yeah, I, getting deep into it. You know, how I kept how, going with it. Um, so I was a technician at that point when I, when I actually okay, so, got on the radio. So you're already licensed. Yeah. So I was always into CB and this is like the story. I was always into like radio and I started out with like FRS radios, even walkie talkies when I was five year old, five years old. I couldn't talk to my dad unless it was like on a walkie talkie, even if it was like across the room, you know, I kept going further, and I got an FRS radio, and I'd still be like, hey, Dad, do you hear me now? I'd go a little further. Hey, Dad, do you hear me now? <laughs> and Can eventually I was now? down at the end of the street trying to stick metal into the antenna to get it to be longer, go farther, that sort of thing. And you know, eventually my grandpa gave me a CB radio. I met a guy at high school who was also into CB. He had a, a scanner. The scanner was on a repeater. I was hearing people just talking about the weather. I'm like, what's kind of, what's this radio service? Is this like a online thing? It's like, Oh, yeah. it's a repeater. You could have been on Gave the Verizon commercial. Can you hear yeah. me now? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so after, <laughs> so after the field day, I got my extra. Um, it took a lot of studying and I was, it was in high school. I did a report uh, or an essay contest and I talked about ham radios use, um, or effectivity in the Haiti earthquake. And I won a trip to DC for seven days. Um, and then um, I got on as the AWR youth editor for a while too. So I wrote a lot of articles for their website. Um, and I was hoping like, dang, I would get a lot of email and I would help a lot of people like um, like Dan was talking about earlier. But really, um, I would probably get one email every key, every couple months with just like, how do I get young people into ham radio? And I'd start this whole conversation all over again. Yeah, that is sort of a, um, a window into the the power or lack thereof of the ARL's ability to project to the youth community. Cause if you were, mm -hmm. you know, being their youth editor and being on the website and all that stuff and not hearing from very many people, you kind of wonder how well it was getting out there. Yeah. It was getting out to the people who wanted to know how to get young people involved. But, um, you know, at least it was like, at least they had a button that labeled youth. If you click another button and another one, like it was, it was buried and I think it's a little bit better and there's a couple of places to go, but, since then, the youth editor position has been um, removed. I think the editor at the time left the company, left the ARRL, so they had a staffing issue. They didn't have enough people to do it, so they removed the youth editor, um, youth column, rather. I don't know if the youth editor is still like a thing on their books or whatever, but they also removed a uh, the Amateur Amateur, which was a blog-type um, thing, Another, you know, yet, yet another blog. I remember was, that. That was fun to read. Yeah, it was, it was another one of those. Doing it yeah, another one of those. Um, I don't. I'm not an expert, and I don't pretend to be. All right, so um, Bill Stearns, uh, NE4RD. The bad news is, uh, you know, we've been going for an hour and a half, and the audience is gone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's well, we're still at, let me get it's off. Dwindling. We're still at nine, though. The, well, you, know, uh, you know, and that's another issue, actually. I think with podcasts, I think most podcasts go way too long. Yeah. 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 What's up with that? He goes for four minutes tops. <laughs> yeah. Props to him for, um, props to you for keeping it under four minutes. Like that makes seconds. it really listenable and really churnable, too. Like like a Netflix, you can just keep going and going and going. You got 300. You're going to be listening to, you know, Foundations of Amateur Radio until the sun comes up. And that's how yeah. I found myself. Well, it, it is, it's going to be content based because um, um, I don't want to hear from people who say they don't have time and then go park themselves in front of Netflix and go through the entire Stranger Things in one night. I don't want to hear you don't got time. Well, that's different. Yeah, but, well, yeah. got to really retain their it, attention. Yeah, it is, it is content. I was going to say this is... Radio to that level. I was going to say this isn't Stranger Things, but maybe it is. I don't know. It's pretty strange. <laughs> Strain I've already done an episode called Stranger Hands. Radio, we should get amateur radio to the point where it is actually on Netflix like that. So yeah. you can actually, you know, binge watch amateur radio. Mm, but you can binge watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's probably as close as we're going to get. 
And and I have done an episode called Stranger Ham, so we're, we're close. <laughs> okay, so um, so um, so Bill, you are also not responsible for coming up with hey, the yeah. uh, the topics of the shows that you're in, right? Uh, no, I actually I uh, come up with most of the topics uh, uh-huh. for uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's find out how. <laughs> Well, well, normally it, it comes to recording day, which is normally Monday. And uh, so I wake up Monday morning and I go in and look at our notepad and I say, okay, is there anything that we're going to talk about tonight? <laughs> and uh, uh, normally it's empty or it's got like one or two things in it. So then I go and I search out the most relevant uh, current items that we can throw in for our, you know, we, we do like a, a three segment show that has amateur radio as the first segment open source is a second segment. And then we talk specifically about Linux and the ham shack. And, uh, that's generally how it all comes together. We get that together. Then, uh, Cheryl comes in, throws in a recipe. Uh, uh, Russ goes and finds some music to throw in the intermission while we yeah, all you guys play a drinks. song. Nobody else. Does. I, I do that. If there happens to be, you know, something, some, some piece of music that is part of whatever we're doing, but I don't just yeah, play we a random generally song. Look for, yeah, we generally look for some Creative Commons music that we can uh, put on there to stay with the uh, you know the open source theme of the program and not and, get, uh, not get a takedown. Yeah, not get a takedown. <laughs> we have put some uh, licensed material on there before, and it hasn't been a problem because we've gotten permission from the author to to put it up there and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it all comes together. You know, I'm I'm just like them. I I you know use Reddit. I use Google to find inspiration of uh, of what the topics are. Generally, I don't use uh, other podcasts to use the information just because it's probably dated by the time we get ours edited to go out. You know, we do live stream when we put it out, but generally it can be like a week or two before it actually goes out. So I try not to, uh, to have something that's been rehashed so many times and stuff like that in the program. Um, but we've been going on, uh, I, I started with Linux in the ham shack about two years ago, about a, year, a little over a year and a half ago, uh, before, uh, Dayton, uh, 2016, and uh, and the program's been going on since 2008. So we uh, we just finished up our ninth year here uh, with the episode 200. We brought in uh, the originator of the show, Richard, and uh, some co-hosts that were on the show before that. And it was a pretty fun show. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward. We're on a break right now, taking a a a, a definite needed break of uh, putting together content. We're going to kind of retool the. The format a little bit and uh, restart recording again in January, on January eighth. So, so the uh, the guy that started the show initially um, uh, handed it off. Yeah, I believe uh, Richard out. started the show. Yeah, he started the show, and he's had some other shows like uh, Resonant Frequency and stuff like that over the years. Um, Russ joined early on, very like you know first uh, first or second episode, and uh, he's been with it ever since. So. He's more of a, a co co creator, <laughs> if you want to call it that. So I mean, Russ has been around for the whole thing, and yeah. uh, he continues to drive the program. And uh, uh, he's been churning through a uh, co host. So I'm uh, I'm co host number like four or five or whatever. So we'll see how long I last. <laughs> All right. So David, there's precedent in case you end yeah. up with the whole thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you could be the next. Yeah, I'm, I'm working towards it. Yep. I know that. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I know that's the plan. It's, it's pretty so much the plan. I'm not going to totally go to take away. A break? I'm sorry? What's that? How do you decide to whether or not to take a break or how to take a break? I mean, Foundations of Amateur Radio is every week. We broadcast the news every week. You know, I've just been on a, on a month holiday for the first time in five years, but the, the show still went to air. How do you decide if you actually take a break or oh, I get produce and I thought you, and I thought you were that. telling us that you needed to go to the bathroom. No, you know, we, we basically, oh, somebody dropped off. Um, yeah, the same. yeah, we basically decide, uh, you know, our, our show isn't really a news program, so we don't offer current news based on just being the, you know, talking about current news, you know, we're not a news program. They are, there are other amateur radio programs that do that. We, uh, we bring up topics of interest to us. So if, if the news item interests us and we have a interesting take on it, or maybe an opinion about it or, or some other relevant piece of the, of the, of the, the news item that that's why it gets in the program. 
if we have no interest on it, it's uh, it's quite obvious and it just dies on the vine. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll read the short blurb and nobody has a comment. It's like, okay, well, I shouldn't have even included this one. Let me just throw this out. Bueller. <laughs> just keep on Bueller. Moving. Anyone? Yeah, exactly. Bueller. <laughs> so, you know, it's not, it's not useful for us to provide information that we don't care about. So, uh, so generally we try to find stuff that at least interests us, you know, it could be just something that we're interested in the hobby and doing, you know, we, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, doing the satellite stuff. Uh, you know, we talked about, uh, uh, the sat nogs and, and all these other guys that are doing really interesting stuff with, uh, SDR and, and the hack RF guys and stuff like that. Um, it interests us. We don't necessarily do it. Um, but we're glad to talk about it and glad to bring those guys on the show and the, then to talk about their, 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 uh, efforts in amateur radio and, and what they're doing. And, uh, it helps if they're doing something more open source, like hack RF and stuff like that, where they have open source platforms that they're building the open source hardware, the software is open source. And, uh, that's basically the, the whole format and mantra of the show is to, uh, promote, uh, using, you know, open free and open source software in the ham shack. So you guys do guests and Dan, you guys do guests on ICQ. No, no, not really. Oh, you don't have I mean, guests? They do it. They do it. They do it in the, in sometimes in the feature section, but not on most of it's the round table. Okay. So, the, so, and that program is kind of cobbled together from, it's not in real time, right? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, do you put it all together in one time and then play in interviews and things or, or do you do, Bits and pieces well, the here and there, and somebody edits it together. Yeah, the features are separately produced, but yeah. but the roundtable is all one shot. That's real time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so within the roundtable, you don't bring in occasional guests to talk about something. That you're, that, uh, that there's never been a guest in in any episode I've been on. Okay. I mean, maybe some other episode. Right. So the structure is because you're the guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a way, in a way, yes. I yeah. mean, in a way, yes. So, I, know, you, I, have a, I have a question though for people: Do, do any of you uh, um, uh, rehearse? No. no, clearly, David, we do not. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and actually, so so when I first started with Gary, you know, Gary has a rule like we don't. We actually, Gary and I don't really talk to each other unless we're like live on on the on the show because we don't want to do the show before we do the show. Yeah, and and invariably when we start talking about stuff, we're killing all the good material. Yeah, Same thing true. with our guests, and and we do a lot of guests. Um, yeah. And well, that is, let's, let's 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 just do the show once, so let's not talk about it till we're right. rolling and make it fresh. Right. Well, well I'll, I'll, tell, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why I ask. I'll tell you why I ask. So so we, we kind of rehearse on ICQ podcast. So mm -hmm. we have we the uh, Martin sends the the list of topics around, and and the the individuals on the panel can add you know, topics, and mostly we all do at some point or another. And before we actually start the recording, we'll talk about the topics for an hour. And some of the topics yeah. will get bounced. And, and uh, uh, it, I, in my mind, it, it makes for a little bit, it's still kind of long. It's still an hour <laughs> long. Yeah. But, but, but at, least at, at least we've talked about it, and there's a lot less hemming and hawing once we get to the actually discussing it. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of podcasts that are are taking that as as a, as a good start. Um, there's one I listen to by CGP Gray. He's like a, a mega big YouTuber, but he has a podcast called Hello Internet, and he's said on his podcast he will they will talk him and uh, Brady Heron will talk for like two hours before they hit record before they're like mm. Mm, well we should start hitting record now. Me on the <laughs> other hand, we like maybe if I if I'm thinking about doing an episode in advance, I'll start a Google Doc and I'll write down some things, and Hilton and Marty will write down some things. We'll we'll share it back and forth and use that kind of as our as our guide to go through it. Um, but most of the time, we just kind of go, "Hey, we're doing a podcast now," and we do have a lot of sections where it's like, "Oh, what are we talking about now?" So I have to heavily edit it, uh, or he does, um, and um, we make it seem like. We didn't say a single um or uh, or I'm going to take a break or I got to take dinner. Let's go on a, you know. So every time we, we don't have ads, but every time we say, oh, we're going to take a break, we'll be right back to you with you know, Faisal Lane Podcast. We do actually do go, do. Leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we actually take a break, so, we leave, and, and then uh, we say, like, hey, Patreon, this and that. So. Yeah. And da one David, the, this, this program, I I'm sorry, I, need, I do need to say, go David, ahead, David, this program is going to be heavily edited, isn't it? <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> Never is. Right, I go ahead, Anna. So, so I, I come from a broadcasting background. I walked into a community radio station 
a couple of years ago now, um, and asked how do I get involved, and I, you know, was on air that night. Um, so I, I found that I spent, for my very first interview, I spent three hours editing a three-minute audio interview, and I went, this is nuts. So I, I decided right then and there that the way to do this is to interview the guest right then and there. If it didn't work, throw it away and do it again. And, and that's what I've done ever since. So if it's um, an interview that goes for three minutes and it just didn't gel and it didn't work, throw it away, do it again. Do you and, do uh, guests and, on, on your six-minute shows? No, I don't. I, there's no guests in Foundations of Amateur Radio. I'm just saying from a production perspective, I, I just decided my time was too valuable and the, the quality of the, of the discussion with the guest was so much better if you – just got them on the hop right then and there, and they 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 said what they thought and they said what they felt right at the first opportunity. You get gold. Mm -hmm. Everything else just feels yeah, produced totally. and, and slow. Yeah, we we get um, a lot of comments on the links of the shows, and I would say more of them. The folks that that bother to to say something will say that they're too long. Yeah. Um, and the folks that like them, as usual, the folks that like things, they. Don't really say much about it. A few, a few do. Some send money, um, and I look at the uh, at the audience. YouTube provides audience uh, retention statistics minute by minute. I can look at the whole show mm -hmm. after a few days and Thanks. see how many people have stuck around. And it's approximately say we we say a show. If you look at the views, we'll say four thousand good shows for around four thousand. And after the halfway point, it's at about twenty five percent, and it hovers near 25, 20, 25 percent until the the bitter end. Those guys are in it for the long haul, and that's our audience. That's our audience. Uh, not not they just the fell 4, asleep at the keyboard. They're not yeah. really into it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, I think you're they, they just the streaming. Yeah. The autoplay is left on. Okay, so so so, so, so now through, so yeah. now that we've taken a turn toward the nasty, I was I was going to say to Dan that you guys rehearsed the show. Um, is it a, is it a compliment or is it a criticism to say you know it doesn't show? <laughs> well, you know, so it's so even though we, we, I mean, it's it's not it's not really a, a rehearsal, right? Because we don't have a script. In the mm -hmm. end, even though we talk about the topics beforehand, guys will still throw in ideas that may have occurred to them since we talked about it or whatever. But so it, it it's not just a rehash of our pre-show talk. Yeah, if and we, that makes sense. Right. And we all end up at 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 the end of a show or maybe listening to it afterwards, saying, oh, "I wish I had said something." Yeah. Either at yeah. all or a whole lot earlier. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. All, we all miss I would stuff. save those for the, the show notes. I, I take a lot of pride in like making sure like everything you talk about is there's a link to it in the show notes. It's always got to be there. And then when I am editing the podcast, I'm like, ah oh, crap, I should have like put that in. I'll put it in the show notes. And usually they're pretty well read, especially if they have are full of links that, you know, are somewhat interesting. So right. or if I like forget a call sign, I'll say, Oh, sorry, KD eight Y V J, who was the call sign that I forgot earlier. <laughs> I'll so, put it out there. Um, so, hopefully they won't, you know, hate me too much. So so, nice so get it in there. Sam's mom probably said, Sam, come to bed. Yeah, Marty, you have you done your that. homework yet? <laughs> <laughs> um and and so we've lost Sam, but I I'm kinda of wondering, uh, have we told him anything to help him get on to episode number five? Um you know, for me, it's just being I, I can, immensely curious and uh, and taking cues from everything I encounter, either things that I've done or things other people are done that have done that somehow catch my attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. It's it's about what gets you excited. What what do you what do you do that gets gets you excited so that you can talk about it and share that with somebody else? And that's every time. You know, just go do stuff. You know, go to a club, go and do a contest, get on air and make noise, find out what happened, you know, watch your radio blow up if you, you know, make yeah. a mistake, Absolutely. you know, all of those kind of things and then document it. Yeah. Yep. And I feel that's, no, uh, go ahead, Charlie. That's, that's exactly how I stay in, in, um, inspired. Like I go to Hamfest, I do contests. Um, I go, I went to like uh, Huntsville Hamfest and Pacific Con, or not Pacific Con, uh, Hamcation for the first time. And every time I go, I get like just, just, explosions of excitement and I, I write them all down and I'm like, here's my big list. But if there's been a long time since I did anything on the air or did any ham fest or talked to anybody like, you know, notable in the hobby, then I lose inspiration. And so my, I, I kind of go it like a, like a waveform, if you will, like a sine wave. I'm, I'm the RF of 
you know, interest in ham radio. Um, <laughs> but keep yourself involved and around the circles. And, you know, joining a club is the easiest way to, to do that. Um, you know, as long as the club is very willing to keep you, you know, engaged. Um, mm. I also Take opportunities feel, as they come along. Is yeah. is I mean, we had uh, the guys that went to Amsterdam Island, FT5 Zulu Mike, and uh, VK, uh, VK0 Echo Kilo. They they all came to VK6 to, uh, you know, set out on their de-expeditions. And I, um, you know, I, I collared them and I, I grabbed them and, and did interviews with them. And, you know, they're amongst one of the, the, the most documented parts of those de-expeditions. You know, they're not actually part of Foundations of Amateur Radio. They're on the same website. Um, but but their interviews about stuff that's happening around you. Now, now, I feel no obligation to personally do everything I talk to people about. In fact, I, almost, I do almost none of them. Yeah. I do some of the digital voice modes on VHF. I've got sitting behind me, there's a, a free DV box that I've never even connected. Um, but most of it, I don't do it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Like I, the first I got on the radio for the first time in in months. This just this last weekend for sweepstakes, and I mean, I, I personally don't like repeat, like don't like chatting on repeaters, don't like you know pulling up a radio and just talking. But you know, I I really like ham radio for the technology and and for the camaraderie that we have here. You know, and and so when I do get on the radio, it's like I think I don't don't do it too much because I end up spending, I end up forgetting the time, and then I realize, <laughs> oh, it's way too late. I need to go. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Most of mine is mobile cause it's, it's the opportunity. Yeah. Well, there's one other thing that we, we teased just a little bit earlier that I want to, um, that you know, totally different from what we've been talking about. Um, and that is this, uh, CBS thing, this NCIS. Uh, first of all, I want to, I want to, uh, brag that, um, when we did the two episodes, David on, uh, um, and NCIS Newington, and on uh, we, the first NCIS stuff we tossed into was not a show that was going to be about that. It was just a little bit on the, on the tail end. It was when we were kind of complaining about Ray Novak and uh, ICOM stuns, kills, amateur or a DMR. Um, CBS filed <laughs> takedowns. CBS filed takedowns on Facebook because they don't have the, op, op, the option for monetization. And they filed monetization on uh, uh, YouTube. YouTube. And... Um, and you probably uh, remember that. Um, let's bring you up here full screen. Uh, you probably remember that I looked in the camera and said, "CBS, this is fair use. Don't mm -hmm. file a takedown." And they and did. And what did I say? You said it's a robot. They're going to do it anyway. It's a robot. They're going to do it anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it they did. Take long, right? Yeah, they, they did by the next day. And right. I filed a, um, a an appeal or a dispute, and they and 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 for the first time. Because this is this is something called fair use. You can use this stuff if if you're transforming it, not using it all, not using the heart of it. The fair use is not that complicated, but it's also not no guarantees. Um, and and for the first time, my appeals or my disputes were rejected, out of hand. They didn't give a reason. They just said, "Yeah, we reject it." Well, both Facebook and YouTube provide an appeal to the rejection. And they make it scary. And it was like a tweet, right? You could only like type 400 words or Face, something. Facebook started with 200 <laughs> words, 200 characters. You could, 200 right. characters for your first argument. And then 700 whole characters for your second, for your re rebuttal argument. Uh, YouTube is, doesn't have any limit. Um, but both, uh, they make it scary. They say, you lose this and you get a strike. YouTube's yeah. official term is the strike. I'm not sure what, what Facebook says. Yeah. Three strikes, mm -hmm. you're out. And if this program lost its ability to be on YouTube, this program would be done. Sure. So it was important to win. And they said, you could, it's like a game show. You can stop here and keep, keep what you've won, <laughs> or you can <laughs> see what's behind door number three. You know, it could be a new car. It could be a step stool. Um, there's so a, there's a really big, like, just, just, takeover not takeover but uh this algorithm thing has been demonetizing all these videos on on youtube yeah um, i don't know about facebook that much but cody's lab um and ave and these uh these creator videos that always regularly get to the top of youtube uh one of them was cody's lab he did a video on um uh what did he do i think he microwaved some gnats to see if they would like die <laughs> um and they got 
somebody flagged it and it got taken down and it was his third strike because he does like chemistry chemical reaction videos explosions that sort of thing and it got taken down it wasn't copyright so it's not exactly this but yeah flagged actually, for content yeah he got mm-hmm. actually got it all taken down but everybody in the community up rose and was like this is ridiculous and now um, everybody's really mad because this algorithm thing. I even I even got a video demonetized too. I mean, not as as if I made any money off of it, but uh, <laughs> for um, filming the the street protest um, because it was you know something like controversial, and it's it's just been really really strange and really ridiculous. But hopefully, like with all this you know uproar, they're going to change something. Yeah. Well, because um, it is scary. Like, and I don't monetize mine. I'd ask for contributions. Uh, mm-hmm. Amradionow.tv. Click the pig. There's Arvin back there. Uh, I forgot to say that at the beginning of the show, <laughs> David, I can't see your, uh, can't see. He's you. there. He's there. small, but he's there. There he is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't monetize the, the programs cause I don't want pre-rolls. I don't want things that are going to irritate the viewers, you know, having to watch an hour and a half or two hour show is irritating enough. Um, <laughs> You know, and <laughs> me, well, um, we're down to ten percent, so nobody yeah. will see this anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah me, nobody's me. watching this crap. So, <laughs> so, so what CBS did is they didn't they didn't uh, um, do a takedown. They just chose to monetize it on YouTube, and apparently they don't they don't have that option on uh, on Facebook. So it's just a takedown. So I uh, I filed that. You know, I crossed my fingers and filed the the, uh, the appeal, um, the second appeal. And a couple of days later, I got the email back that said, uh, good news. Congratulations. You win door number three, a uh, YouTube. Um, it's, it's not YouTube. It's not Facebook that are taking things down. They're, they're, they're working based on what has been asked by the content owners. The owners. And, um, and so CBS said, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. We, we withdraw our complaint. So it started with a robot. It probably proceeded with a robot. And then it may have even ended with a robot just saying, okay, this guy is apparently serious because he has gone to the three steps. And, and, uh, um, I don't know if, if we ever got a person to, to look at the show and look at the material around what they were complaining about. Don't know if we but ever got to anyway. watch it, but they couldn't. Finish Otherwise it. you have to get through it. Right? <laughs> sure, they couldn't get through yeah. it all. <laughs> couldn't get through the whole show. Yeah, all right. Kind of slept on it. So, the th- the thing that that I'm left with is um, there's this NCIS show. It's one of the most popular programs in prime time on CBS, and this is what they said about amateur radio. If I can make it play. I've got to put some clothes on. That's the ham. Reason why stereotypes exist, McGee. No, well, this guy has uh, no driver's license. No. Home phone, no cell phone, no reportable income since 2007. So I think this guy's going to be exactly who you picture when you think of ham radio weirdo. And that, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is my case. That is what CBS prime time told probably 25 million people. How do you feel about that? Why hasn't the ARL said anything about that yet? Well, they either will, they have to, you know, choose their battles. And I don't think they, eh, they have like a lot, a lot more, um, a bigger fish to fry. And I think the community that, really like took this. Um, it's entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> who cares? But it's true. Yeah. It's like, look how popular it got ham radio. They, but even the news doesn't represent the news right. Come on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, yeah. uh, just some one person's vision of one thing and they did it for a, for yeah. a funny line. <laughs> And I don't know the impact, but it is kind of, it, you re, you, as hams, we look at it and it's like, oh man, I'm not a weirdo, am I? And, <laughs> well, look at all the preppers and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's we, really we where do. that comes from. Like, right. I, I feel like maybe ham radio weirdo, because we have ham radio weirdos. And, you know, oh yeah. You know, we do. Strange people. Actually, Missouri's home uh, to the- One or two uh, of them on the show right now, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Missouri's <laughs> home to this guy who has a car with, um, I don't know, about 200 antennas on it. So, yeah, yeah. and you know, a missing Are, fender. So, so, okay, so let's take it another angle, right? I'm very active in the Boy Scouts as well. So if they had been talking about that Boy Scout leader and, and what they were doing or, or whatever, I know that, you know, the folks down in Irving, Texas would have been, you know, at CBS's door in yeah. a big way. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you know, they, they kinda, that's a big, that's a difference though. There's... They, they kind of went at it from both angles though. I mean, on one hand you get the, you know, 
that ham radio was the only way to, to get your message out during Katrina and and whatever the other disaster was at 9/11. And then you know they turn around and they say, well, you know these are are the the weirdos or whatever. But in all honesty, I see that as being the general um, opinion, maybe, of somebody that doesn't know what amateur radio is. They're the weirdos. They're the ones that have the antennas on top of their house and on top of their car, and, and you know they're dorks or nerds or whatever. No offense, there, uh, Bill, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Curtis, Curtis, you're all wrong, man. There are there are some definite weirdos in the hobby. Yeah. There are some weirdos in the hobby. Yeah. And, and the, like they, they're not always out front. You know, go to go to just some random field day locations and you'll you'll inadvertently run into some of these weirdos. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, and it, it, it can uh it can uh, add value or devalue uh the image of the hobby or your club or any, any particular thing, but it's, it's the same thing when you're running a business or something like that, you know, you, you want to have a certain image and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just a, a, a hobby for people, you know, as anybody can join, there's no barrier to entry now, you know, you just have to go take a test, which, you know, just about anybody can do. Mm -hmm. They even have it, you know, you don't have to be able to read anymore because now they can give it to you verbally and, and everything well, else. Do that. Yeah, so you know, it's, it's 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 not like we really have an image to uphold. I mean, ARL has an image to you know get more subscribers and get more members <laughs> and stuff like that, and that's really the only thing they care about. I mean, crazy just talking about ham there. radio, just talking about <laughs> ham radio on national TV is is advertisement enough. You know, there's no such thing as bad advertising when you know they don't have a budget to advertise on CBS. Yeah, well, that was that was a free ticket. Yeah, yeah and, and and Curtis, you're right. They did um, they did spend some time saying we we did nice things, and, and David and I discussed that. We think that that was added to the script after they realized how badly they trashed us for the rest yeah, of the show. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's you know entirely possible. The the one thing that I really wish that they would have done a little bit better job of. I mean, you know, I'll I'll give the the uh, uh, you know the stereotype that they said with the guy standing outside the door. But the one thing that I really wish they would have done a little better is simply the, um, you know, not using the handles or using a call sign, you know, since that show is based here in the U.S., using a call sign that's that's at least close to what we are. They really yeah, that did their research on the station, but then they just mucked up the whole... <laughs> mm -hmm. That wasn't even a, a, a bad uh, Australian uh, call sign. Ano's got his hand up there. He's, he that. either... Oh, really has go, to go, go to the bathroom now. Or... No, 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 I've got a question. Jump in. Uh, or a, co a comment, rather. Um, there's this quote. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. So we're at the <laughs> laughing at us stage, right? They've been ignoring us for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how we go. Yeah. 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 And I get it, what everybody's saying. Um, it's just that particular line is the one that, that bothered me. That, you know, that's the ham radio weirdo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It... All of the rest of the stuff, I don't really expect them to get our procedures right. They could get our procedures closer and make no real difference in the value of the program because you know, getting it right or getting it wrong doesn't really change very much. Um, that And that line seems to be pretty gratuitous to me, that it didn't, he didn't have to be that far out. Um, I wouldn't have made him a Boy Scout either, but um, I don't know. One thing that, that I kind of wonder is, they do this to everybody in television. Most of the people they do it to are going to be the, the people that get, get on television all the time. Doctors, lawyers, policemen, firemen, um, the, you know, the big job categories that they write shows around. And so they will have a bad guy from that genre. Do they have bad guys from less well-known like us, uh, subgroups that we just don't notice because that's television. And we only noticed this because it was one of us. Well, there's evil scientists, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And maybe, I maybe that's, that's sort of that where we came here, evil scientist type. Or just clueless. Because he wasn't well, even I mean, the these guys, the hams weren't grossly evil. Grossly under underrepresented, you know, in, in the national market. So 
Um, but it's no surprise, right? You know, even even makers aren't really advertised that much. Once in a while, you'll catch them on a news program or something like that if they've, you know, sold it to the editor along with some kind of package deal with an advertiser. Um, but you know, <laughs> it, it really is what it is. It's it's just a hobby. I mean, we're not that important. Yeah. And uh, for I mean, us, how, to many, sit there how and many radio say, amateurs are there in 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 the US? What's the percentage of the population? I mean, you just cop prime time. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you just got prime time mention of, of amateur <laughs> yeah. radio. It's gold, right? Okay. It's gold. All right. Yeah. So, All right. so if Wallowitz on Big Bang were a ham, would that be a positive or a net negative? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It would always be a positive, right? <laughs> you should be. No yeah. such thing as bad advertising. Yeah. You yeah, should. No, there isn't. You there should really be a ham. All right, guys. Thank Make you very much. Tell the writers. Yeah. I, th I think we can uh, wrap this uh, program up unless somebody's got some uh, burning issue they want to bring up. No, I, think oh, I just want to thank you very much for the invitation to uh, to be here. It's uh, It's been a thrill. Yeah. Uh, I'll definitely second that. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks all y'all for all y'all's comments. And, and uh, yeah. 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 And it's, it's really great to have all of us in one place. Um, I don't know if it's that watchable, but I've had fun here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe like two or three. Yeah. I, I predict I this. I think watchable this, or not, we should do. We should do this again. Make yeah. this yeah. a quarter. I a think quarterly. So. In in a few weeks, this might be a little Reddit. quick. <laughs> in a we few weeks, this episode. Make sure we talk about it. Yeah. So yeah. here's here's the Reddit thing. It's the Hamcasters. I think yeah. Hamcasters is a cool label. Um, yeah. and you know, I don't. It's a good. You know, maybe uh, maybe we can all get together at a booth at Dayton or something with the the you know under the label Hamcasters, um, and there, there'll be a few. It, there's a problem with me being part of it because I push a few people's buttons that don't like it. No, you know, no, no, you don't do that. <laughs> no, no, it's no. not the buttons; it's the lack of the hair. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I can tell. I've got a yeah, pouch. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's hair up there. It's growing back. Uh, the, you know, the Ham Nation guys and and um, uh, Christian, you know, I, I, I've reached out to Christian a lot and he just kind of pushed me away. So after what he did with Katie, I've kind of pushed him away. There's a few others that, that don't like me very much. So if, you know, if I'm sitting here at the lead of Hamcasters, well, there'll be some folks that won't play. But I won't be for, for you know, much or at all. Oh, in the people take future. themselves too seriously. So, yeah. you know, yeah, nobody, nobody is that important. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> over. Really do forget it's a hobby. Yeah. It starts yeah. here on Reddit as hamcasters. Maybe hamcasters can go someplace and become a thing. Who knows? Yeah. But there's, there's this group here. And, uh, I don't know. Would you proudly wear the label of hamcasters? I would. I'll make Better a than podcaster, for it, sure. actually. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Gotta uh, work on the logo. Yeah. 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 Yes. We'll get, Jeff, we'll get Jeff Key one NSS to design this one. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, Ham Radio Now is, uh, can I find the, can I find the thing? That's not the thing. That's not the thing. Nope. That, there you go. What? That's not the thing, but it's close That's enough. That's not the right one. It's close enough. <laughs> That'll be. I, I, I like, I like, I like the begging, <laughs> the begging for the funding part. Pig. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. So if you enjoy the program, stop by hamradionow.tv and click the pig. And um, so I am Gary Pierce, desperately trying to get my name up here, KN4AQ. <laughs> my co-host. I'm David Goldenberg, W0DHG. And um, across, the, uh, across the board from the upper left is Curtis Okay. I am Curtis K5 Charlie Lima Mike with the Everything Ham Radio podcast at everythinghamradio.com. And Dan? I'm Dan KB6NU. Seven threes, everybody. Where, where, do, where do you want people to find you? Multiple places. Oh, uh, yeah. Just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it. Because I got a YouTube channel, too, actually. I put one of my classes on YouTube. <laughs> Everybody's so on So you YouTube. can find me anywhere. Just anybody, Google me. Anybody can be on YouTube. Anno, where do people find you? Uh, search for my call sign, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha, Bravo. You'll find it on iTunes or any other good place where you find your podcast. All four, all four suffix letters. You got to get all four. Yeah. yeah, all four. Otherwise, it's not a call sign. And what do you want to promote, uh, Sterling? Uh, Phase Online Podcast, my YouTube channel, in 0 com. We'll even go so far as you can still see the uh, youth editor blogs if you type in um, 
youth at hamradio.fun. Uh, you can see all my writings there. So, uh, And I also started a blog, in 0 ssccom I actually changed it from in 0 ssc to in 0 ssc ham radio blog because I Googled myself and I wasn't on the ham radio blog list. So maybe that'll change it. So, yeah. There you um, go. Yeah. Okay, Bill, what's your pitch? And I'm Bill Stearns with the Linux in the Hamcast podcast. You can find us at lhspodcast.info. And I'm also on Amateur Radio Newsline. You can catch that on your local repeaters. And I'm also with the K2BSA at k2bsa.net. You can find me on uh, Twitter at, uh, at NE4RD. So you're everywhere. I'm and everywhere. It's, it's Linux in the Ham Shack, as you have said. And you do what I do. I, you say something wrong and don't catch it until... Oh, really? Playback time. <laughs> I think you said yeah, Linux in the Hamcast, which uh, you know, you're getting into the oh, yeah, Hamcasters, yeah. which I like. Yeah, yeah just Let's keep on. That's the yeah. trick of radio, right? You just keep keep moving on. I should mention that I also uh, co-produced the uh, the news in VK6. So you can listen to VK6 ARN News every Sunday. And apparently this week in Amateur Radio also features Foundations of Amateur Radio every week. So Good you deal. can catch it in lots of places. Yeah, and there are a lot of other ham radio Yep. podcasters and YouTubers and bloggers that are not on Maybe. the show that, that do great jobs. Um, there's lots out there, which reminds me of a topic I wanted to bring up in, in, in a little bit late, but if anybody wants to, to chime in on it, um, all this new media stuff, the league is not, doesn't have a TV show. They barely have a, you know, they got the doctor is in and, and their news and that's about it. And CQ has got nothing. Um, maybe this is a topic for our next get together. Cause you know, or, or is it because hams as a group, as, as the couple of million worldwide hams are 50 years behind the times and don't get this? Anybody want to? No, I think it's, a, I think it's about how you pitch yourself. I mean, we're producing a, a weekly half hour news program. We're actually actively working to put that on normal broadcast radio so that it actually, you know, it'll quadruple our audience overnight if not a factor 10, and the general public will all of a sudden be able to hear it. And that's if you, even if you just start with a very tiny little broadcaster. It's about how you figure out where to find your audience. If you're going to keep pitching towards radio amateurs, all you're going to catch is radio amateurs. You've got to find a way to talk to people that are not radio amateurs. And Linux in the ham shack is a perfect example. You know, yes, it's radio and all of that. But, hey, hold on, there's Linux. Yes, I'll be in that. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, you get this whole other yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of cross pollination with uh, the open source group so we get a lot of people with uh, the, the linux uh you know amp, the linux fest and stuff like that linux Fest northwest and um and all those groups as well so we get a lot of cross pollinization between the open source communities which is kind of cool because we get a lot of people that are interested in maybe finding out about this amateur radio thing that are just uh, pure linux or pure bsd or pure open source guy and uh, it's, it's kind of interesting, the, the, the group we get, because we get about anywhere from like 3,000 to 5,000 uh, downloads on every episode. Yeah. And I apologize because our, our um, most loyal listeners, especially the ones listening to the audio podcast, are now saying, I've been sitting in the driveway for 15 <laughs> minutes. I want to go inside. We just shut up. But I got to do one thing because I, I, I promised we could show your T-shirt and it's been hidden for the whole time. So stand up. T-shirt. Sorry, let me help that. There you, there you go. go. Awesome. <laughs> I'm assuming that was worthwhile. David, teach these people Absolutely. how to end. Teach these people how to end the show. Wait, wait. Anybody? Is anybody listening to the end of the show? Sterling's been there, and Bill's been there. Sterling, yep. yeah. And Dan, you might have been there. I forget. You might have been there. Uh, not with Where? me. You were on the show. I don't know. If you made it to the oh, end. Yeah, I, I was know. at your show. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, at yeah. your show. So it's really, really bad radio practice. And it's three words. How are we going to do this, Gary? Do you do That's, you do the first one? I'll do the second one. Everybody else will join in the fir- the, the third, third one because right? they'll get it by then. Because right. you'll get it by then. Ready? All right. Over. And out. out. And now what I, should, what I should do is tell them that I have Keep stopped talking. Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> but but not. <laughs> but don't but don't yeah. right because now we're going to record the best part of the show yeah the best part always comes when everybody thinks we're done so but the so, guy in the driveway what about him <laughs> yeah hey go inside already jesus yeah. get earbuds it's cold Ooh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just oh, going into great. summertime now right uh i don't know well gentlemen it i've is, got to uh, run summer it's about to begin yeah See it's you, very nice Good night, Curtis. Hey, Mike, okay. I know Curtis, my, kid, my yeah. kids are going to come storm the garage shortly, too. Okay. So um, let's all say goodbye to, wave goodbye to Facebook. 
Goodbye, Facebook. Bye, Facebook. Get my lower third in right there. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Well <laughs> done. This, this is one of our scripts for uh, those scout things that uh, people don't like, right? There yeah, that's us. That's so we got that. I got uh, I got one from uh, the K2BSA. There it is. When we uh, activate an NPOTA unit here in the state. Cool. Yeah. Kids... Kids, kids like it. I mean, you know, ham radio is is kind of weird, and we get a lot of traction with the scouts, you know, here in Montana and also nationally. Um, you know, obviously with the Radio Merit Badge program, you're you're familiar with that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have we have pretty good luck with that. So, serious question: How do you how do you allocate resources? I mean, we all have lives. We all, you know, are radio amateurs and podcasting and doing all these million of other things. I mean, we host nets, no doubt, and get on air and do all kinds of weird and wonderful things. How do you allocate resources? How do you decide, you know, if this week is a week that you're going to skip the podcast or you're just so driven that you have to? He's looking for an out. Like a yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm just wondering how people deal with it. There's an option. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the ICQ podcast is every two weeks. You know, that's yeah. just, it's regularly it's scheduled. Kind of into the schedule. They, yeah. they, have a, they have a good good uh, group, you know, and. Uh, yeah, we try not to push weeks. I mean, if we have to, we'll push one week, but it really ends up screwing everything up for everybody. So we, uh, yeah. we generally just try to record. <laughs> if it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. If not, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, we'll just, we'll try to squeeze it in some way or another, but. You know, I generally try to keep the the night free, and you know we have the calendar, you know, pretty much set for the whole year, uh, based upon the start date. So it's not too terrible to to do it. You know, we might have an off night where, you know, one of us is catching something else or something else came up. Yeah, uh, you know, we can generally run the show without each other, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah, and I'm on the other side of the fence. Like, oh, we're just ad hoc. We decided that random. Like, if we have a free second, both of us. You know, we'll go. Or if I decide, like, I really have a good idea on a, on a video I should make, I'll start recording video. Um, but the problem is, like, five minutes later, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go do another thing. We travel a lot. My, me, my fiance, Justin, and I, we go all over the place. We have friends in Seattle and Atlanta, and we're going to Thailand over Christmas. Went to Austria last year and uh, all over Europe last year for Christmas. And that's, like, high priority because, you know, everybody says travel when you're young. So I'm taking that advice. Um, and her hobby is, you know, credit card rewards churning. There's a whole hobby of uh of doing that so it's yeah. really helpful for me which also lets me go to like things like hamcation and all that stuff to keep inspired and everything and she's really supportive but um ham radio i a fraction of my life is really anything you know involved in ham radio i think i spend more time thinking about doing things than i am doing things which is why i had this blog on you know uh, analysis paralysis or paralysis by analysis um where i just have so many things thinking about what do i do i don't know um I got to write them all down and figure out what's the most important thing. What's my most favorite thing. So, and then you feed that into, you know, life and happiness and work and everything. And what's, what's really most important at the time is just like what I constantly have a, a, fee, uh, a while loop going on in, in my brain thinking like, is this the right thing? <laughs> right thing? So. so I have a question for you, Anno. Do you, do yeah. you guys, do, do you guys do this on a volunteer basis? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah see, so, so, so this is the problem. This is why the ARRL doesn't do this. ARRL has a problem with volunteers. They, <laughs> and, my, and honest to God, and, and I've, I've written about this. They know how I feel about this. So this is nothing new. I think that if they, they got the right, the right volunteers, they would be shown up, and they, and they don't like to be shown up. So, so they, don't, they don't get people, good people, to help them do things. And that's interesting. So I should mention that although we have dropped off Facebook, I'm still recording, and I'll put all of this on the end of the show, unless you'd hey, rather I'm that dropped. I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you, yeah, I'm, I'm always problem, happy yeah. to let you do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, Everything that, I say that, is always for consumption, yeah. especially that, by rants that, on the ARRL. That, that's, that's why we well, say I mean, this is the best part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see what they, you know, who they appreciate by, you know, you know when Scott left. <laughs> you know, there was... There's a perfect example. You got a really a guy that's you know, uh, you know, bringing it on and, and and making things happen, and and then they get rid of him. <laughs> it's like that doesn't make much sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of the things they do doesn't make don't make much sense to me. I I agree with you, Dan, because because I I wanted to do a video like series for the ARRL and and I wanted to keep doing the 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 column whenever they said, oh, we're not going to have that anymore. Yeah. And you know, I I was like, here's here's my stuff. I'm a good writer. I can you know edit video. Here's keep all writing. that stuff. But they were like. Yeah. Yeah, no, we can't do that because we can't pay. We can't, you know, we have to, you know, do all this. I'm like, I don't need to be paid for, right. for anything. For, for a while. Yeah, so in Australia, while. there is payment of any of that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, the Wireless Institute of Australia has got two employees. Everybody else is a volunteer. Okay. And and the news that I'm producing isn't even WIA news. It's our local VK6 news. It's been produced by volunteers since 1931. We decided, you know, to actually formalize it in some way, creates an actual association just so that we could actually hold some gear and, and not have to reinvent the wheel as soon as somebody became a silent key and, you know, actually, you know, produce some content and some consistency and maintain a website and a domain and all of that kind of stuff. But it's all volunteer driven. It's it's all completely, you know, oh, I feel like doing this today. Yeah. yeah. I, w I was the uh, uh, affiliated club coordinator in Michigan for a while, and and I volunteered to do the the club newsletter for ARRL. And you know they just blew me off, and and to this day they don't have a club new club's newsletter. And and what gripes me about this, the really gripes me, is you, every other word out of a ARRL official's mouth about clubs is, oh, clubs are the lifeblood of, of ham mm. radio. Well, you know, they, mm. they don't support the clubs at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, there is one exception um, lately, I guess, um, with the Collegiate Amateur Radio Initiative. That's something I was like, right. we need to do something with that. Because I come out of WZRAAA and looking at Harvard, Harvard actually kind of spearheaded, or the Ivy League spearheaded the uh, the idea. Um, and I still volunteer as an admin on their Facebook page. And, and, I, and I always am constantly looking for colleges who are just now getting on the air. I, I still get a few emails here and there, but um, that's totally a volunteer effort. And, and so what is, what is that is actual effort? Of, what does it do? So it's the Collegiate Amateur Radio Initiative, and it's kind of just a community of college hams um, on Facebook. Um, it used to be there was this website, collegearc.com. It was a forum where we could you know, share our college radio stations, share our ideas, plans, thoughts, projects, that sort of thing. And it went by the wayside because um, the Salmi brothers, K. G2 LRC and uh, KB2 LRC. They graduated from Rochester Polytechnic Institute, K2 GXC, um, and they didn't have time for it. So, and it kind of fell apart. So, I, a few years later, I was like, hey, we need to do this. Um, and so was the league. It was kind of like a multiple, um, um, many people were thinking about it at the same time, and we all came together at the same time um, at, uh, at one convention. And AWR actually um, sponsored it, so they made a lot of uh, uh, they made banners, signs. They you know did this "We Want You" campaign. Um, then they started giving materials to colleges who asked for it, like uh, handbooks and uh, study guides and stickers and um, boxes of of swag and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know how much they're doing right now. We really don't have I don't really don't have any like reports or or things to give. Uh, but um, but me personally, I just make sure the Facebook page is curated with some good information. I talk to colleges directly. Um, some guys have already spooled up next year's NAQP in January is going to be a collegiate competition. Um, and I had nothing to do with that. I, I was just thinking about it, you know, today. And, um, you know, so that's spooling up. So that's that's like, that's one volunteer thing. But the AWR hasn't really, I think they're kind of like, They've done their their work, and and I think the the community is self supporting, and I think they're moving on to the next thing. So, but I don't have no idea what that next thing is. Hopefully, it's more volunteerism, but we'll see. So I'm thinking, um, what they get criticized for a lot is that they their core membership is DXers and contesters, old mm -hmm. old men DXers and contesters, and well, they'll do stuff on the peripheral. They'll put most of their effort in the in right. that corner. You go I, don't, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it's the feeling that I hear it expressed. It's the feeling I get. Yeah. I, I feel like that's so, also what hams, hams in general are like the most hams are going to be those kinds of, yeah. uh, those kinds of people too. I, I really do think that a couple of years ago they could have put together this much of a system. This is le less than $50,000 <laughs> mm -hmm. in a, in a studio or done it in one of the W1AW studios and um and put together a show now it, it would uh, um not be my favorite kind of thing because it would be a house organ show it would be all 
press release programming. And you know, I, that's, they, already, they already have one of those shows, don't they? <laughs> um, do they have? Um, well, there there is our. Okay, so I just should say there already is one of those amateur radio shows. Oh yes, yeah, not the leagues. It's <laughs> um, you know Ham Nation or you know, um, yeah, a lot of everybody's shows is is um, upbeat and positive, and not that they shouldn't be. Um, you know, here's the fun that we're having. And and more of my program is upbeat and positive than I think is when I go back and look at them. But there are things going on, like what went on in Puerto Rico, that need attention. And you know, the rest of the world's media does that sort of stuff, and nothing in ham radio ever does. And you know, since we lost yeah. Wayne Green, things that things that don't draw criticism to to things are are kind of strange. Like like Theta or Ham Nation, there's there's very little, if any, like critics critics there they all have to be perfect and they have to love everybody and it has to seem like everything is right in the world yeah. but it isn't and we have to there has to be people who talk about those things so that we get them out there we say here's what happened here's all the facts here's you know this viewpoint that viewpoint and that's just the way you know you well know, i mean once you get into needing sponsors and you take yeah. on sponsorships yeah. then yeah. then you're it becomes a real problem it is it is yeah. it does have to be a slight agenda yeah it has to be good yeah, 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 exactly. day LA. yeah uh, I mean, the Wallace yeah, I, Institute of Australia last year went through some serious upheaval and, you know, and our news team covered that. And and we copped, you know, both praise and flack for it at the same time. You know, we had people that were demonizing us at one end and, and at the other end, we had people that were championing our cause and saying, you know, why is nobody talking about this? There is no mechanism to to talk about stuff that's happening within amateur radio that's controversial. We we have this 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 process where everything is is sweet and sugary and and fine and and we argue about the pileups and you know that crazy <laughs> bloke that you know interfered with me when I was trying to do, you know work whatever we have those kind of conversations but we don't actually talk about the mechanics of of the organization of amateur radio we don't talk about uh, you know how do you normalize licensing how do you deal with training how do you evolve training i mean at the moment our training still talks about analog tv you know it's nuts we don't have any analog tvs in australia anymore why are we still <laughs> incorporating that kind of knowledge in in the syllabus you know that dialogue doesn't seem to be happening i mean it might be happening in a in a dark room somewhere but it doesn't happen in the community yeah. the yeah, whole the, yeah. the whole ham radio community doesn't talk about it and the whole ham radio community isn't interested but it's not there for those who are it is just in the dark. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there is one exception. If you go to QRZ, everything's a everything is a chaos and and a controversy, and everybody disagrees on on the QRZ. <laughs> I don't. You know the um. There was one guy who posted like the word Elmer is uh, is killing yeah. Harry, and I, I was like, what are you guys talking about? It's <laughs> just a word. Like, go spend your time Elmering instead of complaining about the word. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, what you I do. Why and, uh, wonder why we invented a new word when there was a perfectly good word? Everyone knew what it meant. Yeah, um, it's interesting you mentioned QRZ. I mean, I I published my Foundations of Amateur Radio on QRZ for a while, and I attracted um, you know an element that their their whole sole purpose in life was to take down this podcast. Like I was, you know, one person actually wrote that I was personally destroying amateur radio and I'm going, really, I, I have that power, you know, me and my awesome. three minutes a week, I've, I'm destroying yeah, amateur radio all on my own. Yeah, hey, I, I, I was, but it was just like, seriously. I get that all the time for teaching one day tech classes. I yeah, just blow them okay, off. Okay, right. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> yeah. What it's kind like, of a good ham can you make in one day? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, what but you got right. to yeah. start <laughs> All right, I got a, I got a quick special guest to say hey. Come on, come say hey. One of the many hams in my household came to uh, mostly they came to say feed me dinner. So um, <laughs> come say come say hi. <laughs> she's, she's not gonna do it. Oh come on, just, come on, come on, Gwen. Here she's hiding. Wait, there she is. Which one is oh, this? Well. It's uh, November six golf might golf. She's hiding out. All right, we're gonna. We're going to say 7-3. Hey, I want to thank you guys all, and I'm serious about wanting to do this on a regular basis. I think this was great. Mm, yeah, yeah no and we'll, we'll and look awesome. for, for some of the other guys that couldn't make it tonight. And uh, Yeah, exactly. Uh, Did we get our John, show sponsors John in was, there? I think John was uh, John Jacobs from um, from the uh, Outdoor Podcast. So he was kind of bummed that it wasn't the right timing, but we'll work mm. it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to pick a time. I'm impressed how many people we did get. Yeah. 
Oh, and Sterling's, Sterling's got some family is just in the back there too. <laughs> yep, I got All right. I guess. I'm going to uh, say 7-3. All right. Yep. Thanks, all right. See you guys later. Thanks gonna, a lot. I'm going to stop seven, the uh, stop the hard drive. And uh, hard drive. Yeah. And now make- I can really say what we talk, want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs>